Hello, everyone. Welcome <laughs> to Critical Role, where a bunch of us nerdy ass voice actors sit around and play Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Travis is in a good mood. <laughs> uh, so, I'm glad you guys can join us. Uh, before we jump into tonight's episode, let's go ahead and get to some quick announcements. Uh, first and foremost, we have uh, our first sponsor for the evening, our recurring friends at the wondrous D&D Beyond. Uh, Beyond. Sam, you said you were prepared in advance for this one. Yeah, I, uh, well, I was, I was, I've been getting, getting a lot of questions lately about like, how do you write these ad things? And I kind of, you know, I make it sound like, oh, I just come up with it on the fly. It's not true. I, I spent a lot of time. In fact, I have a file here oh. of rejected ads oh, oh, no. oh. that I didn't deem good enough to use mm -hmm. to promote our friends at DND Beyond. DNDBeyond.com. Go there, sign up, use their service like we do. So here's just a few. I'm just going to rifle through my files. This one's terrible. <laughs> um, it's, it was a pirate one. I was going to wear an eye patch and yeah. go, Ahoy and welcome to D&D Beyond. Uh, <laughs> grab your duffel, set the binnacle, and follow the freebooters to dndbeyond.com. But it, it didn't make sense. This one was, uh, this one was, I was going to do a Travis impression. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, bros. How about that Cowboys game, right? When Prescott hit Hearns on that outside post route? Hearns doesn't play for them yet. I, First season. <laughs> I nearly spilled my Natty Light all over my all over my Emmett Smith commemorative Snuggie. Emmett <laughs> Snuggie! <laughs> Man, I love sports, the smell of grass, the sound of marching bands, the sight of 22 men pounding each other for... All right. Uh, here's an early draft. Too real. Too real. Uh, here's an early draft of the f now famous D&D Beyond jingle. Oh. I went through many drafts of the lyrics before I landed on the primo ones that we got. <coughs> oh boy. <clears throat> you got your perfect wizard, his tomes and his supplies. But he burned his entire family to death, and now he's traumatized. <laughs> I thought that was a little too dark. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's a lot. This one, what was this one? <laughs> Our tests indicate that your rash is spread to the groin area. Nope, that's not it. Wow. <laughs> um, that was a different file. Yeah. Uh, I had this one. This one's really conceptual. Uh, here, I'll do it. Oh. Matt. Yes. Matt. Yes. Matt. Yes. Matt. Yes. That's all it says. It's oh. just mad. It's just mad. I just keep going and saying, mad. it wouldn't have worked. It wouldn't have worked. <laughs> These are why it's rejected. <laughs> Uh, oh, this one. This one is specific. Very, very Tim and Eric of you. I respect that. <laughs> yeah. uh, this one is specific. I, we're all excited to meet Laura and Travis's baby. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I consulted with some computer whizzes. We did some facial recognition to find out what their baby would might look oh, like. Oh no, no! It's Please got, tell me this is true. It's oh, got, no. what did it's you got do? Travis's eyes, Laura's eyebrows, <laughs> and why don't you just feast your eyes? Oh jeez! On this. <laughs> This beauty. I mean, that is so terrifying. That is some Planet of the Apes. It looks like a Ferengi from Star Trek. Yeah. It is definitely yeah. your mouth. That's Travis's beard. <laughs> it's like just the chin strap part, uh -huh. though. That's really a blinket wow. of me. Yeah. Yeah. And then the the other one I, I had, the other one I had was flowers for you Aww. to say sorry for that last bit. Aww. Aww. <laughs> and that concludes the file. I, that's all I got. The, the other things in here were just were just the pictures that I cut out. <laughs> you guys from. Oh Jesus! Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Very Joker. Yeah. It's yeah. Crazy. Uh, <laughs> oh, I like that one. Yeah. 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 That one. That's good. That's <laughs> so there's more rejected ones, but uh, you know I'll read you those another day. There we go. Uh, BB, BB, BB. Oh, oh, I got my class for <laughs> <laughs> I can see it. <laughs> the flowers are a little more oh. bitter right now. I don't oh, know. Oh, so it is yeah, kind of, no, yeah, it is. Look, 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 look. Yeah, look. that's Anthony Kiedis. It yeah. really is Anthony no. Kiedis. <laughs> we'll do a side by side. We'll put it on, yeah. we'll put it on Twitter. We'll, yeah. we'll post it later. Mouth was made to. 
But all of that is to say, D and D Beyond. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, D and D Beyond. What a what a look into the future. Yeah. And what a bright future at that. Uh, our our second sponsor for the night actually comes from uh, inside the family. Uh, those of you who are familiar with our, our first campaign got to see him uh, performing as, as Garthok for one of our guest episodes. Uh, and he's been on a number of shows here King Sundry. He helped write the theme song for Critical Role, actually wrote the theme song uh, for our show, amongst many other songs of the series. Jason Charles Miller uh, has a new album coming out this week called <laughs> In the Wasteland. Um, the, art, the art piece looks really cool, the design there. Um, but yeah, it's available now. Uh, you can find it wherever else music is streamed or sold. Uh, you can buy an autographed physical CD copy of it from Jason's website, which is jasoncharlesmiller.com. Mm -hmm. uh, if you like rock, country, or metal music, anything in between, you'll probably like this album. If you ever heard of his previous work, uh, it's, it's pretty badass, actually. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm very picky about music, and his stuff's great, so check it out. Hope you like it. We have a great uh, little video at the break, also, to discuss uh, this fantastic album, so thank you, uh, Jason, and I hope you guys enjoy his new stuff. Um, all righty, moving on. Uh, we made the uh, really exciting announcement earlier this week, if you haven't seen, uh, but we launched our new online store. Uh, we're working on brand new shows for our, our YouTube and Twitch channel. Are um, none of us wearing the new shirt? Oh, wow. I thought someone <laughs> else. Oh, shit. I'll put it on the back. I got it right here. Brand. I'll put it on well, okay, the back. Okay, okay. I'll put it on. Wow. <laughs> Keep going, Matt. So, uh, we did. We, we we have also put up in the in the on the critroll.com shop uh, the new Mighty Nine shirt. Uh, uh, it sold out. It's already selling out really fast in a lot of sizes. But we already have we have more ordered that are coming in. So we'll have to date you guys as soon as those come in. Only small, medium, and 4X are sold out right now. 4XL, but yeah. everything else is still everything else is still in there for now. So uh, if you are of those sizes that are sold out, we'll have more soon. Um, but yeah, so we're super excited about all things coming up. Uh, and uh, but Critical Role and Tox Machina will still be here uh, on the Geek and Sunday Twitch and an alpha. Uh, so do not worry. All the new stuff will be coming on our own channels and we'll let you guys know as things come forward. So super stoked about that. Yeah. Um, also, I uh, wanted to let you guys know, uh, friends of ours in the community, uh, you guys, some of you guys are familiar with uh, WebDM, they do uh, fantastic work, uh, fantastic streams, and they are doing on June 24th at 1 p.m. Central Time this weekend, a, uh, a fantastic fundraiser D&D stream uh, with a, a wonderful all-female cast. We have Satine Phoenix, uh, Lisa Chen, Autumn Umfris, uh, uh, Sid Shields, and the DM Emma Lambert's gonna be running for the uh, Benefit the Girls Empowerment Network. Uh, in Texas, uh, so tune in at twitch.tv slash webdm or twitch.tv slash critical role will be hosting them as well. Um, so you can go ahead and check it out. It's going to be a wonderful game with good people involved and a great charitable event that you can help be part of that cause. So look forward to that. Yeah, not awesome. to be confused with WebMD. No. <laughs> no. Um, the standard editions of Vox Machina Origins, the comic, are still available through the Geek and Sundry and Alpha online shops. Uh, details are at critical.com. Uh, Talks Machina is, of course, every Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. Pacific, where our fantastic host, Brian W. Foster, talks about the episode that's happening tonight. Next week. So watch us next week, uh, uh, and a few of us will be there present to discuss what will transpire. Uh, I believe that is it, and that is all for the announcements. Yeah. Anything else, guys, or shall we? Uh, mm -hmm. I think it was short and sweet. Pretty, yeah. pretty good. All righty. Then, without further ado, let us jump in to tonight's episode of Critical. <laughs> <laughs>
Hello, everyone, and welcome back. <laughs> That's good. That's good. That's good. Um, so, last we left off, the Mighty Nine had completed their first of two ventures they agreed to uh, complete in the name of the gentleman, heading northward towards Barrel Bend, uh, traversing the dangerous Labenda Swamp, freeing the uh, the once endangered safe house from the encroaching marrow uh, dangers that had destroyed and decimated the people that were working there at the time and freeing it up for future use. Uh, you had acquired a bird friend in the tiny Kiri that is along you, dagger in hand. Um, Six hit points. Yeah, that's fine. You'll be fine. She's going to die. Um, you gathered your things and went back to the open road where you headed to the crossroads, did some trading. Uh, through the evening, jumped into a few old friends who were looking to rob you, uh, <laughs> sent them on their way, yeah. and then continued northward until eventually you came upon the outskirts of the, uh, uh, the silver, uh, was it silver, silver quell ridge? There we go. Brain not working. Um, to the gnomish city of Hupperduk. Upon arriving in the city, supplies in you took in the industrial sites, the elements of it that are uh, heavy machinery and the creation of new types of clockwork-based technologies. The stacks of soot and steam sent outward. The uh, war machines being developed for use to the eastern lines where the conflict with Jorahas is now brewing. You made a friend, uh, the name of uh, Risa, who said in exchange for a round of drinks in the evening would show you around the town for a bit. And upon making your way to the upper level, uh, you were given a brief tour of the vicinity, which seemed strangely empty. Um, the streets very well decorated for some seeming celebration, but nobody present. Uh, and as the sun slowly went down, the town came to life as all the work whistles blew, the sounds of merriment began, and suddenly, as the sun goes vanishing behind the distant mountains, the golds and oranges and subtle purples of the sunset begin to take over. The sound of music and laughter begins to take the streets. So, Mighty Nine. What would you like to do? Stop laughter my spells! <laughs> I don't we're, trust laughter and music. <laughs> were we on the, were we on the way to something? Were we going to <coughs> some place? Tanker? Is that where we were going? Tanker? Flushing tank. Is, is that a place to live? Or to stay? It was a tavern. Yep. Risa! Right, yeah? There's a big party happening now. Like I said, welcome to Hooper Duke. But, should we, sh should we party? Well, I mean, what else is there to do for the night here but that? We don't know. <laughs> we just got here. There's nothing else to do. You've arrived. Go and get your stuff somewhere. Let's have a drink. Let's go get our stuff somewhere. You owe me around anyway. It's just every, every night, or it just, it is. Yeah, it's, it's part of our culture, our gnomish heritage. Why? Why? Because it keeps us working hard every day. Sure, maybe our, uh, General longevity for gnomes is a little shorter than most, but what a life we lead. At that point, she reaches out and you see as, she, as you, she's kind of leaning up the cart as you guys are heading through the street, these kids run by with sparklers in their hands and she reaches out and like plucks one from their hand and picks it up and it's like <laughs> around. She kind of passes it over. Whoa! What? <laughs> That's not, no, I, 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 oh, are oh, you drawing something? It's a dick! <laughs> 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 I can already see I'm gonna like you, folks. <laughs> well, work hard, play hard. That's the way we do here. All I right. like this town. Should we drop our shit off and? Where are we dropping? Do, are we? Can, can we stay at this place as well? Or do we... you can. Hi. <laughs> Give me that. I want to smell it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, question. <laughs> this bluff, <laughs> blushing ta tankard tavern. I mean, like the doors lock, right? There's privacy. It's not like some fucking free for all all night, is it? Well, in the tavern, I. The upstairs in the rooms, I assume they. Well, have. you can lock the doors. Oh, well, just ask it. I don't know. It could be free love, love and just a bunch of like crazy people roaming around. I don't know. It is called the blushing tankard. Right. Why is it blushing? Because you put your lips to it. Oh shit. Because why? Because why? Because you put your lips to it. Oh. Yeah. We're in for a fuck. Okay. All right. Lead do I see way. anyone? Uh, do I see anyone selling like? Um, 
glow sticks. <laughs> <laughs> make a, a, big, make a perception a check. Light a sword. Yeah, the fiber, fiber optics. optics. <laughs> I, want, I want a fiber optic whip. What am I? Candy necklaces, big giant pacifiers. <laughs> it's not a great. Uh, nine. Huh. <laughs> What you see is is waves of fast moving families and people, uh, gnomish, some dwarves, a few uh, human sized folks rushing by. It looks like some of them are rushing from work to get home to just you know, disrobe from all their dirty clothes and jump back out with their party attire, or they're already on their way to wherever the destination is. You hear fireworks going off in the distance and occasional flashes in the sky. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you don't see any vendors at this juncture. Um, at this point, who's who's helming the cart and the horses? Fort. I am. Oh, okay. At this point, uh, Risa kind of saddles up, sits right in the little bench next to you in the front of the cart, and takes kind of the part of the reins. Is like, I'm helping you guide you to where you're trying to get to go. Follow me. Okay? Tuck to the right. It's got about two blocks down that way. It's gonna be hard to miss. Look for the uh, uh, the large arch with the various spiraling ivy vines against it. Very nice of you. Can I keep an eye on her hands just to make sure she's not going through my pocket? Yeah. Make a sure. perception check. Or, 15. 15. Uh, during this travel, as you're kind of keeping an eye out, um, she seems to be just focused on the task at hand. I feel a little guilty, but not much. That means <laughs> that her sleight of hand is better than your perception. That's oh, all that means. I mean, that's what it could mean. Yeah. Or she could just not be trying to steal from yeah, you, but no. it could be either. You don't know. <laughs> um, so, after pulling around the side, you come to this this large kind of a, a celebration square where you can see there are three stages set up. Uh, there is a large maypole in the center and you can see they're currently uh, lifting up and tethering these large uh, colorful streamers of multiple colors. Uh, people are gathering uh, what look to be baskets of flowers. Not, if you get tossed and you catch it and they're, they're made of cloth. You get the sense here that one, they don't have access to a lot of Fresh flowers here in Hupper Duke, based mm -hmm. on the, the the rocky terrain and the perpetual uh, tossing of soot and ash into the atmosphere. But also, if the celebration is that often, they probably just continue to reuse the same okay. <laughs> elements okay. over and over again. Um, uh, as you come over into this corner, you can see there are bands starting to play, music being set up on the outside. Uh, people are starting to sit down blankets and. Uh, families are starting to gather in this area, and to your left, you see the large kind of ivory archway with the uh, uh, ivy that's twisting across the top of it. At which point, uh, Risa reaches and kind of tugs your hands to the left to gear the cart in that oh, direction okay. and goes, All right, blush and tankard, right up this way. <laughs> Some more laughter, and at this point, you can see there are two vendors now on the outside, uh, one of which is currently selling what looks to be uh, like flower necklaces or, or bands. Uh, the other has what look to be clusters of sparklers and firecrackers. Here's some of them now. Yep. Am I stopping? Yep. I'm yeah, just gotta keep go. it going. I'm just gonna. Oh, really? And I just roll Ghost over. Riding? I'll follow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, just... Give me some too, Bo. Well, give me some too. Okay. Okay. I go up to the, the spar sparklers and firecrackers. Right. You walk up and you can see there's there's a, a young gnomish man, maybe in his late what would be the equivalent of late teens or early twenties, got you know very prominent Adam's amp, Adam's apple and very kind of thin for, for some of the gnomes you see around there. He lances up to you, holding the small barrel filled with various small scale explosives. Uh, hi, hi, can I help you? Oh, jeez. I want three of everything. Three, all right, uh, just get this together. Um, How much comes in a pack? <laughs> well, do you want three of everything, or do you want a pack? They come in packs. Oh, uh, <laughs> we're gonna lose a finger before the night's done. Did you just change your shirt, Travis? Yeah, bitch. <laughs> How did that happen? <laughs> focus, focus, sorry. Focus, sorry. <laughs> focus. <laughs> I, I, packs of 10. 10, 10 sparklers or 10, 10 poppers? Ten packs for both of ten. Yeah, yeah, I want one of each. All right, pack, pack, pack of, each. of each, pack of each. Yep. Uh, that'll be five silver. Okay, thank you. I slow down just a little bit and give her time. You know. I don't think she's coming. And then uh, I also get a get a flower necklace for Jester. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that that's uh, on the other side. The next person over there, you see, it's this kind of. A uh, uh, portly looking fellow, maybe in his, his middle ages or so, is kind of resting inside of his neck almost. It's like rescinded <laughs> inside. Uh, hi. Yeah, the flowers are going to run about uh, uh, it's five copper per string. So, do you want just one? <laughs> I'll, uh, 
<laughs> Bring him with us. He's got Bring the him with he's us. got like like bunch of them tied up in his hair and like hanging off his neck. Do you also do braids? <laughs> braids are across the way over there. Cindy does the braids. I'll just take one. All right, that's five copper. Thank you. Please, please Thanks. tell me he has like a short sword and can fight. It's <laughs> <laughs> gonna keep collecting pathetic characters that fight with you. <laughs> like, like, uh, we that guy. I'll be happy every night. Liners. It's okay, the best I, front line you could hope for. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I catch up and I give Jester the flower. As she starts to run up, I go. Lord. No, I'm kidding. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Is that for me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <gasps> oh, it's beautiful. But it looked like you. I'm sorry if it smells weird. Oh, wait, I guess it had to be like Over this. It's beautiful. I take out one of the poppers and I throw it on the ground. Did what happens? Fruit? <laughs> Shit! Oh. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna pay. I jump out and I go pick it up. It's too valuable. <laughs> and I run back. And you go back and look at it, you realize there is there is actually like a tiny little fuse on it. Oh, there's a process. Okay, I jump back on. <laughs> Caleb! Caleb, light it! No, you throw it. Okay, okay. Oh, like skeet shooting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. throw it in the okay. air. Firebolt. Roll for an attack. Firebolt? <laughs> what? He's <It's> gone. <laughs> it incinerates the part. Uh, that's pretty good. That's 19 plus something. Wow. All right, you don't even roll damage. You watch as she tosses it in the air, it arcs. This tiny little firecracker, this like little gray rod, and then this little streak of flame fires up, hits it, and it detonates with this loud pop. Sound and you see sparks kind of <laughs> around it. It dissipates a moment after, and in the vicinity, you watch is about seven or eight nearby uh, gnomes, uh, two of which are children. All go, <gasps> yes! Start clapping and cheering. You see that? I'm their hero. How did you do it? <sighs> <laughs> yeah, different fingers, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I like it. Um, <laughs> this is amazing. What are you? These could be useful. For the crackers. And giggles, or what do you for have like in mind? For distractions. Ooh, we could yeah. do that again, yeah. and like we were fighting people. Diversions. Yeah. Sure, it went very good in this swamp. Yeah. With that little one. <laughs> well, can I have one to examine? Say no. You have a bunch of them. How many is in a pack? Well, ten. So you have nine now. <laughs> I might have to get more before we leave this town. <laughs> I think Thank that's you. smart. <laughs> but how uh, how much do we know about black powder or? Uh, well, communally, not much at all. You make an intelligence check and uh, have advantage because of your alchemical history. Okay, I'll take the first roll. Intelligence. Yes. Uh, 18. Uh, you, you know, uh, it's. I mean, it, it's had minor applications for a while, but it's only really been applied. Uh, and very condensed and common use uh, for like the explosives you found in the mine for clearing out spaces and underground you know caverns or for the detonation of localized rocks that are in the way of paths trying to be put through mountain ranges. Um, small scale black powder like this on this very small scale, you haven't encountered really. Um, so this seems to be a relatively new use of this particular compound. And, and uh, up to this point, it's been. Rare that we've that I or we've come across anything. You've you've barely come across it at all. You've okay. you've read about it. Okay. Um, so actually, the, the 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 dynamite sticks you found in the in the mine were probably the first ones you've actually encountered in your okay. experience. You know, not a lot not a lot of use for it in a small farming town of, of Felderwind, but on the outskirts of it. Fireworks before in Nicodranas? Uh You have before, but you but but they're saved for very rare occasions, like like the coming of a ship. Uh, that's been long gone from shore or particular times of the year, of the calendar year for celebrations, they would go off. And for that particular, they put out like ship barges out on the water and they would fire them up from the, from the waterfront. So having this this close is kind of intense. And even that small burst right there, there was like a flash of heat that you haven't really had before and it was really exciting. Are we just in an ocean of uh, gnomes? Is it like 98% gnomes all around us? Uh, most everyone you see here is gnomish. Uh, there's the next percentage, you've seen a handful of dwarves. Yeah. Um, it's the next uh, price prominent uh, uh, people that live here, and then uh, a, a, a sp smattering people? of human half elf. Okay. Okay. Um, and right now, you guys have just come to the outside of the, the blushing tanker. I'm uh, traveling with my hood up, minor detail, as you are. All right. Let's go inside. Yeah, we're here. All right. Is there a, like a hitching post in the front? 
There is. Yeah. yeah. Hitch up the horses. Okay. Mm. Do you think it's safe? <coughs> I don't I know. I never they, think it's safe. They seem real jovial, like. Well, people that have libations, they get up to hijinks at night, you know, and this seems like their main activity here. Uh, you want to go in and secure some rooms and I'll watch the carriage, figure out if there's somewhere else we need to keep it? I pull out the silver thread and I start going around the horses. Ooh, what was that? Yeah. All right. Oi! Yeah. Have you ever been dancing before? Have I ever been dancing before? Yeah. Like, to a, to a place like this? Yeah. I've danced. Okay, just making sure. Why are we dancing? I figure we're going to dance. Probably tonight. inevitably. All right. Oh I might need some <laughs> liquor. Please, no. Okay. All right. So you guys leaving uh, Caleb, and you're staying with Caleb while he sets up the yeah. Well, he does the, the string. Do we um. need to choreograph something? <gasps> we probably should. We should probably get Kerry involved. That sounds adorable. <laughs> 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 Come on, Kiri. <laughs> Definitely gonna need a drink for this. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna lose her tonight. <laughs> Alrighty. So as you guys enter uh, the, the the blushing tankard tavern, it is one of the larger taverns you've been in. The the floor space, as soon as you walk in, looks like it maybe has twenty or so round tables scattered amongst the floor. Ooh. Um, there is a stage in the far back where uh, the music hasn't quite started yet, but there are musicians setting up. You can see a violinist who's currently tuning. Uh, there's a piano in the back. Um, and outside of a couple of taverns you saw in Zadash, in your experiences from when you were on, on the coast, uh, pianos aren't as common in tavern spaces. They're usually reserved for the upper class, uh, for you know private performances or, or um, higher end social events. Um, however, the tables are filling up already, people are rushing in there, food is being passed around left and right. Uh, you can see in the back there's a, there's a group of gnomes that are currently kind of clapping the ground on their table, singing some sort of a, a, a tune, a shanty almost. One of them is up on the table, kind of clapping his legs there, and then one of the, the, the barmaids come by and goes, like, slaps him, it's like, get off the table! Um, this place is great. It's really nice. Uh, so, what would you guys like to do? It's very small. Though. Try and get some rooms. Let's get some rooms and store stuff and get out there. I want to go try to play the piano. All righty. Right away? Yeah. Do you play the piano? I played it a little bit at home. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I want to listen. I'm going to sit close by. Okay. Molly and I will go. I have We're going to go get some rooms. Look to get a lot some of really good songs that I learned when I was growing up. I'm going to sit down and try to play chopsticks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Go ahead and make a performance check. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's an eight. There's a few moments of this going on before you suddenly hear this. And you turn over your left shoulder, and you can see there. There's a half elven gentleman in very nice doublet who is currently holding what looks like a handful of sheet music. Um, you're you're at my piano. He kind of twitches at the off tune, hammering at the keys. I'll be right back. And he turns around and wanders off for a moment, kind of clearing his ear with his pinky. Um, you guys go to get rooms? Yeah. Or you head to the front. There, there was, it's a very long bar that kind of wraps around the right side of the entire chamber. Uh, it has two kind of uh, doors, like hatches that can open up. And from the inside, you see two individuals. You see uh, what looks like a male gnome with a massive mane of red hair, clean shaven, kind of middle aged, and he's smiling and running around, getting drinks, sliding them down the bar, filling things. He's, he's he kind of like the, the gnomish redhead equivalent of, uh, of Tom Cruise, <laughs> like spinning the bottles and just like, yeah, pouring yeah, it out. On the other side, you see a, a female dwarf with this uh, awesome, well-kept kind of chin-strap beard, uh, who has beautiful eye makeup on, and this very colorful uh, kind of silk billowing blouse that tapers at the wrist with a kind of a flourish. Um, and she's currently filling out drink and snack orders, and they're both just workhorses. You see, they both smiles on their faces, and they're chatting with regulars. Uh, they haven't you haven't quite caught their eye yet. They're in the midst of other business. She was a. Did you say she was a dwarf or? A she dwarf, was, yeah. <clears throat> Who do we talk to? Do we talk to the gnome or the dwarf? This is whichever one we catch the eye of first. Okay. Do you want to? Yeah, we should do the bar lean in thing. All right, I'm in. We gotta. 
Uh, can I shove some other people around and do that thing? For the hell of it, both you guys roll charisma checks, please. Oh, oh great. This, will be, this is going to be funny. Something we're great at. Just straight <laughs> checks. Just roll d20, add your charisma modifier. Oh, yeah. yeah. That dice just is the biggest cheese. Okay, Want to go at the same time? It rocks back and forth. Okay. Three, three one, two, two, one, six. Eight. <laughs> so the better part of 15 minutes passed of you guys waiting there, being overlooked, until eventually uh, uh, the, the, the dwarf woman stops and goes, Paul, oh, right, sorry about that. Uh, didn't see you there. You're a bit higher than the usual folk. What can I do for you? That seems oddly backwards. Um, we need a couple rooms, a few rooms, handful of rooms, rooms? and some drinks. Both of those can be done, Lassie. Yeah. How many rooms oh. do we need? Three, four? One, two, three, four. 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 Four, four. 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 Right. Let's see that. Let's see that. There about uh, that's uh, one gold piece per room per night. I've put down four gold pieces. Whoa. Does it come with amenities? Does it have a mini bar? Do you charge? This is the mini bar, my dear. <laughs> but don't worry, we can bring drinks up, we can bring companions up, we can bring what you need up, just let us know. You're in a tourist town, so things are going to cost something. All right. On the other side of the bar, I cast haste on Jester while she's playing the oh! piano. Oh! I want to start playing the entertainer. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but, but like really fast. <laughs> it's it's quite it's kind of impressive, a little off key, but overall like impressive the speed of the composition. Yeah. And it's right as she starts crescendoing, it we're so to get to the quiet part. But it did Burn. A hand slams down on the keys, and that same half elven gentleman leans in once more and goes. If I might please request my instrument returned to me, my dear. This is a really good piano. Thank you. You should be really proud it's yours. I am. Do you have a tip jar? I have a tipping hat. And he pulls off from the side, it looks like this, this wide-brimmed hat that comes to a point in the front and kind of floppy in the back, and he sets it up on top of the piano. I really think the first couple tips should be to me because I really set up the room for you. Well then, I certainly hope the first few tips come while you're at the bench. Mm, fabulous. And he sits down on the bench and pushes you off of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I toss one gold in and say, this one's for the lady. Very good. Did Very you see? Good. Did you see? I saw, I saw. Cracks Thank his knuckles, you. sets his music down in front, starts getting ready. Um, the other, <laughs> the other performers to the side are watching this out of the corner of their eye and kind of laughing. And they're enjoying the tension that's brewing. Um, Run over and give Caleb a kiss on the cheek. Aww. Thank you, Caleb. Yeah. You guys get your room situated. Um, you, uh, uh, as the the keys being passed out to the different rooms, uh, drinks are being handed. So, are you looking for something strong or something strong? Amaze me, baffle me, make me forget where I am. Oh she, one of one is she leans into you and goes, ooh. I like you, you're colorful. Oh, bless you, you're colorful yourself. I love everything you're wearing. Thank you. <laughs> uh, first one's on me, how about that? What? Bless you, I'll happily play, uh, pay for hers as well because I want to drink her under the fucking table. Oh, tonight. well, hold that till later on. That event's not till later tonight. What happens later tonight? Other than more drink, is there like? Is this your first time here? Are we that obvious? <laughs> a bit, a bit. <sighs> Well, um, we have some performances going on, and then we have our contest, our uh, weekly uh, hour of honor. So just don't uh, don't drink too much if you're looking to compete. And she pops like the top button <gasps> off the top of her blouse, and just kind of give a little, little better look <laughs> of her dwarven hood. You did it. Drama. <laughs> <laughs> I, re I realized I could do it as I was doing it. Um, <laughs> Uh, she, as she does that, she reaches down and pulls out what looks to be this, this uh, like dark red, almost uh, glass uh, bottle, the large cap that <laughs> pulls off, pulls off, <laughs> little tiny glass, passes it over to you, and you look at it as it comes to rest. And she, you know, you're used to seeing liquid splash quite often. This kind of, it sloshes at a slower pace. It's a thicker, mm -hmm. a thicker liquor. And then dip a finger. It's sweet, surprisingly sweet, yeah. strong. The burn kicks in afterward. You like it. Shoot or sip? That's up to you. 
Sorry to interrupt your incessant flirting. Can I please have a damn drink? <laughs> Would you like I one of the Yes, one of the same, yes. All right, that'd be five silver pieces. I thought you paid for me. I thought you paid for me. I am paying for you. I just put a gold down to keep the tip as well. <laughs> oh my goodness, thank you. She puts it in her mm -hmm. cleavage. Um, pours you another shot of it as well. Hands it over. I just kill the whole thing. All right, it burns, but it's good. It's like a it's like a sweet, thick honey liquor that coats the throat, and the coating at first feels nice until the the burn hits, and you're like kind of medicinal. Oh. Accepted. It's good. Caleb and I have coming at this point, and I, I turn to Caleb and go, you know, I I feel like I may be regretting my roommate choice tonight. It's it's just a hunch. I think he's in his element. <laughs> um, well, uh, the odds are that you are not going to even see him in your room tonight, so I wouldn't worry about it so much. You think? He'll just like tear into the night, and maybe not come back till the sun comes up. <clears throat> he's like a, a, a coyote. You know what that what that is? Yeah, the little, like the little diplomatic uh... immunity. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. <laughs> I, I, I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they like to fuck a lot, is my point. <laughs> I thought you meant they were not rabbit. Oh, yeah, that, 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 that. <laughs> we're going to have to work on our analogies. I feel like there's something missing here. <laughs> So like a yeah okay a bi bunny coyote okay. It <laughs> does sound cute. But you know if you want a quieter evening, uh, you can certainly share the room with Not and I for once. It's probably not as raucous a room, but uh, you're welcome to it. Yeah, just 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 in case he goes, you know, full Monty. I just kind of might have like a secret Yasha. knock or something. Where did Yasha go? Yasha is with you, okay. but she's currently Quiet. the players in Japan Sorry. filming. <laughs> um, as, as, as you glance around, Yasha is kind of sitting to the back and towering over most of the clientele here, and, and not not necessarily uncomfortable, but just unsure what to make of the jovial atmosphere. There is like the faint corner of a smile, but the kind of awkward, anxious smile of not knowing what to do. I'm kind of afraid to step in any direction and crush somebody. Yeah, just turning on the charm. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. I appreciate it. There are I really like it when she crosses her arms like that so, and makes her biceps yeah. look good. Yeah, so fair. Molly can have a room all to his own if he really wants to, you know. <clears throat> oh. Oh, are we talking about that? Oh, I'm not going to invade your space if you don't need it. Don't worry about it. No, no, no. I mean, half of me is interested, the other half is terrified, so I'm just kind of curious. Yeah. And if you drink enough, you won't remember either way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, at this point, uh, Rip Riss is like, all right, well, if, if you got your rooms taken care of, uh, we're looking for a place to sit then. Yeah. At this point, she glances past, and you can see the. Um, at this point, patrons are starting to get really rowdy. Uh, they have these kind of rope-hung chandeliers in three different spots, and you can see one person has kind of jumped up onto one and is hanging back and forth off of it, and because ah. some people are like, yeah! And you can see all of a sudden the uh, uh, the dwarf woman at the bar goes like, oh, for the love of God, clambers over with a speed you didn't expect from her, rushes over and grabs the angle and just tears him down off onto the ground. <laughs> Not in my bar! You know, I've never seen anyone actually swing from a chandelier. I kind of just thought it was like a metaphor. Oh no, that's a metaphor. entirely something you can do. Yeah. It's more common than you think. It's <laughs> pretty nice. Yes. Is it allowed in other bars? I, I is it, is it talking to Rissa. <laughs> I was like, um, I, I imagine it if if they're not paying attention. Mm. Okay. There, there, that could was, be a good there was theme. there was some pub. I don't remember what town I was in, but I do remember the pub because it was actually called the Swinging Chandelier. <gasps> I don't remember what town it was, though. But it was a great pub. Not surprising. It had anyway the best chandelier. <laughs> My gnomish I spot what looks to be one open table across the way right there. And Rissa points, and you can see past the way there is one table that uh, two people are just getting up from and leaving. And I will dart as, at full speed, full dash to get that table. <laughs> All <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, you. You and Rissa go into a full run. You you beating her easily. You get to the table and kind of scoot into the side. As she approaches, you watch as two male gnomes kind of intercept her and kind of block her path. 
One of them goes, ah, oh, sorry, Tinker Top, table's not for you. The other one, and she goes, ah, fuck off, Fitz. I worked hard enough. I saw this table fair and square. Uh, this, the other one goes, oh, you don't work, table top. Looks like your brain, just like your brain sick dad. This table's for working folk. Uh, if it's kind of glance over there, says, hey, go ask your pops to make you a table to drink at alone. Might buy an hour before it breaks. I'm going to walk right into the middle of this. <laughs> Gentle persons, are you harassing our employee right now? They both look wildly confused. No, no. We have employed the services of of this person right here, and I would agree that you should probably leave right now and get another table for yourselves. Make an intimidation check. Oh, please. Huh? Uh, nope, oh. that's a four. <laughs> Come on, man. Oh. <laughs> As you lean forward and in that tense glare, a little bit of a liquor-based burp comes up abruptly and kind of breaks the intensity of the moment. Oh, someone's starting early, not too bad. Now I've heard about these folks. Their blood's fire, but on the inside, they're nothing but cold and clammy. And he goes and flicks the edge of your nose. <gasps> these two little gnomish punks. I use my tail. And I'm using, oh, I was about to say, if you want to go two at the same time, I say a little bit of Infernal, and I'm, and I'm going to actually use a Blood Maledict to make him go blind for a second. Oh! <laughs> and I was going to smack him on the ass with my tail at the same time. All right, which one? There's the one in the, there's, there's kind of the bigger one. the other one. Yeah, okay. one on the left for me. So the one that just flicked you in the nose, his eyes just go black, and you can see the bit of crimson kind of pulling at the corner of the eyes. He goes, whoa, I, oh. Uh, our kid stumbles back and like hits the stool and falls onto his ass. Uh, what, what's going on? I, I'm gonna jump on top of him and start rifling through. Some his people buckets. cannot hold their legs. <laughs> Thank you. I was hoping for it. Go ahead and make a, a sleight of hand check. The table, Sam. The table. Uh, twenty-three. All right. Yeah, you you no, made it. Twenty-seven. All right. <laughs> you you managed to pull uh, six silver pieces and three gold pieces out of his pocket. Anything uh, other than money? Right now, no. Okay, cool. Uh, strangely enough, it's only money, um, and only that amount. Okay. I'm watching not, uh, and as soon as I see that she has found everything that she is looking for, I've got the copper wire ready, and I uh, mutter so through it. Found I mutter through the wire to the one on the ground, they're going to kill you, you have to run now. <laughs> the one that gets slapped in the ass by gesture is like, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, I apologize, um, Risa, we didn't know. Uh, reaches over and goes and grabs the friend and kind of is like, what's it? And as soon as Not jumps on and starts like thrashing around on him. Uh, get, get the thing back! Goes and like pushes you off of its body, uh, uh, picks up the other gnome, and they both kind of, at this point, his eyes come back and like the little like strings of blood are kind of curling down the side of his cheek. He goes, what happened? What happened? Uh, they both look. can't hold their liquor. It's really embarrassing. It's kind of sad. Yeah. They both really? just kind of get lost into the crowd. No, stay, play with us longer. Rissa looks over her shoulder at them, leaves, and goes like, <laughs> wow, well, that, that took a turn fast. Wow. I like the way that worked out. I me too, me too, business. indeed. Who were they? Who? Fitz and. Uh, Fitz and Ashton. They're both a couple of punks. I've known them since I was a kid. They called you Tabletop. Well, Tinkertop. Tinkertop. <laughs> both equally mysterious. Wait, so your dad is what, rich or something? Uh. It's nothing to be ashamed of. It's okay if he is. So he kind of curls into the the bench around the table and leans one shoulder onto it and goes, "My uh, my father's kind of um, it's an inventor, a tinkerer, um, of some renown at one time. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's had a rough few years. He said he was brain sick. Yeah. Wow, that's just him being an arsehole. What kind of stuff does he make?" All sorts of things, toys, contraptions, uh, occasionally uh, uh, whatever he's told to make by the starosta. <gasps> but um, he's he's just a bumbling twat, really. Can we meet him? Uh, he's probably in nap time right now. Tomorrow, maybe? Okay. Sure, yeah. I bring over a round of drinks for everybody. Alrighty. Uh, another round of drinks, just general ale drinks for everybody would probably run you, let's see here, mug, uh, we'll say for, it's like three silver pieces. Okay. Um, all right, 
So if you guys kind of gather around for a second, uh, Rissa kind of livens up a bit after that conversation. Goes, but anyway, um, you've asked me a bit about myself. What about you? What are you here for? What what, what brings you to this godforsaken place? We're actually here for a spot of work. Uh-huh. Looking for work? Yes, yes, of course, work. That's what we're not doing. Lo- not looking for work. We're just on a on a job. Yeah. Yeah. I said for a spot of work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. And honestly, the name really sells this place. We've been fascinated with it for quite some time. <laughs> well, it's just not the first time we've heard that. I was really hoping you would have houses of mushrooms. <clears throat> Do you have any? That might be. I'm going to... I'm just going to call that his uh, unintentional ignorance, but no, gnomes don't live in mushrooms. Don't be saying that around here very loudly. Uh, not all folks will be taken kindly to that. She's set in her ways. No, no, no. I just thought, you know, Hopper Duke, it just sounded like a mushroom sort oh, of nothing. town. Didn't she just say not to again? I'm going to stop, yeah, though. There you go. That's the one. They prefer the term toadstools. Oh. I feel like that's worse. Yeah. She grabs one of the tankards and is just drinking heavily from it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, at this moment in time, the uh, the music begins to kick in even louder. At this point, the celebration has kind of kicked into a second gear here. Once I can find the uh, <laughs> music transition here, there we go. Second, Oh, it's the noise room. Second gear, part At this point, the crowd begins to kind of hush for a moment. You watch from one of the back rooms, the door opens, and a range of brightly colored gnome dancers come rushing into the room to a swell of cheers and applause. Woo! You see four dancers emerge across the spectrum of gender, take to tabletops and begin to stomp and click their feet to the rhythm of the music. The musicians begin to finally pick up and build. The, 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 the pianist that you met earlier is now starting to just make his music happen and it's beautiful and it echoes through the room. Uh, the placement of it, and you get the sense now, uh, whether it be some enchantment or some intentional acoustic presence in the room, but the music carries well and seems to just bleed from everywhere. Uh, as the dancers are up on the tables, he watches these kind of silk scarves, the rainbow color from their arms, twirl into these large circles and shapes, and they all have this worked out, fantastic kind of uh, uh, choreography in unison. They've been leap from tabletop to tabletop in this kind of circular fashion, uh, making these large, kind of arching foot leaps and landing again. The folks cheer with each land, the music kind of whirring itself into this frenzy. Folks are starting to toss coins towards them on the table. They, in the middle of it, will spin like catch one and pocket it and move back, continue the dance. Uh, you get the sense this. This is a very practice and you know fairly often performance to how well oiled this machine of performance is. They are uh, almost as nimble as you. What? I toss a silver. <laughs> Snatched out of the air. <laughs> I toss two at the same time. I see if I catch one. <laughs> Missile snare. Jesus. <laughs> you guys try and catch one of what of all these coins. Is that a dancer's tip? Make yeah. a dexterity check. Yeah. A low, this is gonna low. this is gonna be a contested I mean, dexterity check between you and a dancer. Sick shit. Oh yeah, no, I'm into it. <laughs> Especially if it fails, please. Natural that's, one. That's, it. Yeah. that's, that's justice. <laughs> so as you as you reach for the coin, your fingers almost touch it before everything goes dark. As a a <laughs> a wooden shoe covered foot poof, across your face from the dancer who catches it between two fingers, looks down, retracts the foot, and as you kind of get your vision back and look up, the dancer kind of gives you a wink and goes back into a spin. <laughs> I kind of, I wink back. Oh. You know, I kind of like that. Yeah. <laughs> that was kind of hot. <laughs> as the dancers begin to kind of gather, leaping from table to table to start getting closer and closer to the center of the room, they begin to spin together until eventually they clasp hands, and you watch as some of the uh, the bar hands grab the tables and start pushing them together in the center, kind of telling the, the patrons to step back a bit, and as they do, the circle continues to get tighter and tighter as they leap from table to table, kind of holding each other wrist to wrist, kind of arm to arm. As they do, the silks are kind of billowing out, and you can see them extending. The silks they've been holding seem to ex- have been a bunch hidden within their sleeves, and as they billow out, they widen and widen and widen until it's like a parachute of rainbow colors that just spin in this circle that can, it completely engulfs them. All you see is like the tips of their heads within this, this swirl of color until eventually the music comes to a climax. Bam, with a heavy stomp, all the colors fade, and the dancers bow, at which point everyone in the room just starts cheering and clapping. Hot oh, damn. 
uh, the dancers sm uh, smile and they step off me and walking around uh, with hats in front and taking tips from people at tables as they adjust the tables back to their original point. And everyone else kind of goes back to their meals and you see them take, tossing the odd copper or silver piece into their hats. I don't know if we can learn that day. I think we can do it. Let's just work on something simple. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're gonna just take a moment to work out a couple moves in case it comes up. Yeah. <laughs> just some basic, a basic things. hand moves. Pop and lock. Oh, Here he's there off to the side <laughs> going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. We can oh we can have her stand on one shoulder each. I'm much can, shorter be, than you. I'll be on my knees. I'll be on my knees. And then we can do these things. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. And I'll and She's Carrie can have a ribbon and she'll do this while we do it. I like it. It's basically the same as what they do. <laughs> <laughs> Kayla maybe could do some 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 effects, some special yeah. effects. Will it be dark while we are doing this? <laughs> Oh. I don't, I don't. Well, I just, oh. you know, I worry oh, about, yes. you know what I worry about. Maybe I about. should sit it out. No, I, I, it just depends on the situation. If it's, I, uh, this, this all happens all over the city, outside, everywhere, yeah? For the most part, yeah, I mean, as the evening goes on, it tends to gather around the places where drink is running freely until everyone passes out and then uh, wakes up, hair of the dog, usually takes himself a bit of fuse and then gets back to work. A bit of fuse. What? What's fuse? A fuse is kind of the, um, the hair of the dog drink that we brew here, just to get everyone waking up and back to work. I know what Molly will be having in a couple hours. <clears throat> Can I ask you? Oh, about I don't know how it's going to mingle well with non gnomish uh, tracks, but I'm willing to watch and try. I'm very excited to find out. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Reese, can I ask you about the? Uh, was it called Honor Hour that comes up later? Hour of Honor. Hour right. of Honor. Yeah, what's that about? I look over there, and she points to the far wall. Uh, and you can see now they're starting to set up lights on it, uh, these kind of glowing lanterns that they have on, on, on uh, pikes almost. And you can see it's, it's a collection of wooden nameplates. And uh, she goes, so about once a week, there's uh, a contest where the previous holders of the Hour of Honor can take challenges. Whoever provides the most monetary uh, amount to the challenge gets to go one-on-one -on -one with their team, drink to drink until only one's left unpuking or unpassed out. A team drinking competition? The remainder gets the coin with a, I think a percentage goes to the house and gets to take the title and a token. That token is worth a free drink to each member of that team in this bar every night. Every night! Like a drunken CrossFit gym. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry, it is almost like a CrossFit gym. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. We should probably do that. I, think I mean, for idea. this, I would make an exception. This is technically yeah. counting as a short rest right now, by the way. a lot of money. <laughs> Good. How much? Well, he said whoever contributes the most monetarily gets to take a shot at the, you know, the honor. How much do people usually contribute? I have two gold. Uh, from what I've seen, it can depend on the people who are that interested or that competitive. I mean, some folks put up, you know, a few gold they've earned for a few days, they're feeling lucky. Um, I've seen people put upwards, you know, 20, 25 gold sometimes, oh, which is no. quite a, a sizable sum. That is obscene. That is good. Are you a big drinker, Rissa? Uh, I can hold my weight, but I'm not much of a competitor, if that's what you're asking. Is it, uh, is it happening relatively soon, or do we have a few more hours to maybe explore a bit? Uh, I just have the feeling that if we were to engage, that all activities after that would not be uh, <laughs> documented in the old brain so well. I'd say, judging in the time you've been, you've probably been here for the better part of an hour or two, just kind of getting your paces, having drinks, and kind of taking in the performances and the music. So I'd say you probably have another hour before it begins. Want to do a little run around? I, I figure, if we're going to do that. I think we're going to do that. All right. <laughs> Let's go. Who's going to put Kiri either on their shoulders or Me. we to, to bed? To bed. We can't put her to bed. Why not? Because she'll just w come out of the room, won't you, Kiri? Why would she come out of the room? Because Humper did. Because there's so much noise it's and a stuff. Child, it's you know, family it's friendly. Here, there's no fucking like you know. You can't. There's no drop-off daycare. We could. Is there a daycare it. here? <laughs> I am Kiri. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps. Uh, yes, you are very sweet. Just give her a smile. Yes, please. I'm very sweet. Perhaps <laughs> our feathered friend is a little more important than the horses, and I could just leave my threads around her room, and she would be safe there, and I would know if there was a problem. Doesn't here. matter though. 
No, but it does. It does matter because you are a young child, and you need to get your rest. And we are going to be doing things that are, uh, quite frankly, not for your eyes. Okay. She would come out of the room. I know her. I know her. <laughs> what if we get her one of those child leashes? Oh, oh! They said that they would send someone to the room, right, Molly? Did they? Or didn't you oh, say that they, they had, or you, that they would send someone to the room, so like? Well, you could get a babysitter. babysitter. Like a, a babysitter. A babysitter. You could pay one of their yeah, women to <laughs> to watch our little Kiri. I mean, I have done some ridiculous things in my life. This that might might take the top of it. Though. Oh, they're working make... women. Uh -huh. We rent them for a time. Yep. Risa, at this point, goes like, "Well, first off, you're assuming they're all women." Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, but we, we don't could want get to leave her alone with some guy that we have never met. Gigolo man to go up there and, and watch out for Kiri. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I don't think that's a bad Poor idea. Oh. Risa, do you know how much one of these um, evening companions might run per hour? I can honestly say I do not. <laughs> Shit. Sorry. Should I go ask? Yes. Yes, all right, fine. I'll be right back and I'll make my way up to the bar. <laughs> to the one with the. With I've the... got an idea. I've got an idea. I've got an idea. <sighs> there is one member of our party who is probably not going to want to go out. <laughs> and see this ridiculousness. She is that a wallflower is tonight. So I turn she around. She very uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I still want to check the price, so I go up yeah. to the bar. <laughs> As you approach the bar, uh, the the dwarven woman who's in the process of cleaning a spill on the side looks over and like sees you and does like a triple take, like, "Where would you look at this strapping, massive green and tooth?" <laughs> Thank you kindly, ma'am. What can I do for you? Uh, it's a little early in the evening, but uh, I thought I might get a head start and just inquire what you know some. Friendship might run me. <laughs> might see forward, but uh, I can't say I'm not interested. Um, I've got a few more hours on my shift, but if you hang around. Uh... Well, I, I would hate to remove you from your duties. I, <laughs> plus, my companions are also interested in the same. You said there might be. Uh... <laughs> Well, it's been a while since oh, I've. Well, uh, no, <laughs> yeah, no, let me clarify. Um, <laughs> I need. Uh, <laughs> on, I need. She goes. She goes. Starts pouring herself a drink. Like multiples, <laughs> not multiples. I need individual <laughs> companions for my friends, not just not just your your beautiful self. How many? Three. Three companions. All yep. right, all right. I have to go and connect with a friend here and see what's available. But that's certainly doable. Great. And do you know how much <clears throat> that might uh, run? Well, it depends on what you're asking for. Is it only for the hour? Is it for the evening? What for the hour requests is good. are? Yeah, you know. For an hour? Three? I'll put you about, um, let's say, 20 gold. Boy, that sounds like a fun night. Outstanding. I will be sure to return, and I turn my head and leave. <laughs> what did she say? That was the most horrible thing I've ever had to do. <laughs> I'm just not prepared to talk say? to people about those things. It's 20 gold for three hours, three people for that's, an hour. That's it? Three, yeah. three man hours. Nope, at one hour, three people, 20 gold. So that's, okay. yeah. Are you all right? <laughs> Oh, it's, it's real uncomfortable. Why do we need three people to watch Kiri? Then it would be more for more than. Look, I, ju I was just making shit up <laughs> on the fly. All right. <laughs> Josh, I know you're not into this. I know that you want to have a night out. Do you just want to sit and keep yeah, the young one out of trouble? Fair. So, uh, I can, I can do that. Yeah. She's small. I can hold her down. <laughs> It's gonna be fine. That's a joke. I, you, that's a joke. I was planning to go out, but it's uh, it's awkward for me. I thought you would be going. Oh, it's awkward for me too. So, I thought that we could, you know, give each other m moral support. You know what I mean? Good. Then you you go out and have a good time. I'll hold the bird down. Is that a phrase, or does she actually mean she'll hold the bird down? I, I Only one way to find out. The child will be dead by the morning. <laughs> Kitty, 
Are you cool with staying with Yasha for the whole night? I can send a message. Oh. Do you promise you won't you won't try to leave her and you won't try to come out and find us? Okay. Okay. I don't know if it's smart. Oh. <laughs> I don't think it is either, oh, Kiri. Just, oh. Come on, she is just trying to tug on your heartstrings. She'll be fine. Oh, I just love her so much. I know, she'll be safe. You be good. She holds a little dagger in front of her. Oh. <laughs> I'll bring you back something else. Lay pointed down, Kiri. Good job, good job. There okay. Goes. Here we go. <laughs> Caleb, we may need a third person to join our dance now. Oh, that's but right. We've lost our... Okay, now me and Caleb will it. do it. You stand on our shoulders, you wave the ribbon. Uh, no, no, that is not a thing that is happening. You could ask Beauregard. I'm, <laughs> that's not going to happen. You can't dance? You're not a have dancer? Have you ever danced, Caleb? Yeah. You could dance if you want <gasps> you to. You have? I can't picture you dancing. He's never going to dance again. <laughs> You'll be He's never going to dance again. <laughs> There's too many dance ones. Yes. You can dance if you want to. Yeah, yeah, he's not going to leave his friends behind. <laughs> yeah, that is the key, if I want to. Yeah, no, but perhaps Beauregard is fleet of foot. She, would, she could uh, round you out. Are you sure? Caleb, we want to dance with you. <laughs> Fucking pets that carry up in this bitch. And I play with Chad, and now I want to play with you. I will take a rain check on that. No, thank you, Jester. It is tempting, but no. We'll figure it out. I guess we can bow. Yeah. No, I know. I'm your second choice. Not third. Or your. It was Kiri first. Caleb okay, second. <laughs> uh huh. That's. <laughs> but you are very dexterous, and I think you will be a very good dancer. Feels like you had to reach for that. No. You kind of stammered a little. Plus, you have already lots of scarves on you, so you can do a lot of the things that the people were doing. You got scarves on you. I do have a lot of scarves. No, and that's truthful. It is obvious how dexterous you are. You're just gruff. <laughs> Yeah. So we should should we dance in the street? What should, we should how just we... rehearse, so we don't know when we're going to need the dance yet. We're going okay. outside to see what this this place has to offer before it's time for a drinking contest. In the we're, city. We're going to need a beagle to lead the charge. I'm assuming that's you. Onward and outward. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <all right. laughs> As, as you're making your way out, um, the uh, the dwarven lass kind of reaches out in your direction for it to flag you down. Oh, uh, <clears throat> ma'am. So, just asking, how soon are you wanting this uh, companionship sent to your rooms? And uh, and you see she's like, her finger's kind of playing with the top front of your armor right there on the edge of the bar, goes like, I could give you a discount. Uh, uh. Uh, I'll reach, you know, I'll reach. here's the thing. He's already been with the Ruby of the Sea, so probably nothing you do could compare to that. It's kind of sad, really. Would you like me to cancel your request, then? Uh, no. No, I, I'd like to put a deposit down. I don't know when we'll be back. Maybe four gold to hold the reservation. <laughs> Ask if All there's right. a cancellation fee. No, I can't. I'm terrified. <laughs> All right, I'll hold on to this till then. Um, well, hopefully see you around. Gives like a hint, a hint of kind of grinning stink eye in your direction, Jester and Magdeford. Take care of yourself. <laughs> Did you just put a hooker on layaway? I think I did. <laughs> I feel like I did. Did you just say I'd been with your mom? I know, I said, as soon as I said that, it was like really creepy. Yeah, it's fucked up. But you know what? It was just a power play, and it didn't really work out, so. I will say, normally, like, being like, yeah, I'm just slept with my mom is like an insult or something, or right. like, don't talk about my mom. Yeah, but you know? people that have slept with my mom are like, like really oh, rich and really powerful, wow. usually, so it's a, a compliment for them. Also, you have to embrace yes and Ford, yes and, not uh, no but. Yeah, mm -hmm. all right, well. This is good. We have 
you have an opportunity for later if you choose to use it. And it could be... Yeah, I could sit in the room and let you know if they're any good or not. <laughs> so sad about Are you honestly right okay? You seem very perturbed. Yeah, I'm not real comfortable with this sort of stuff. Have you ever been with it, someone? Yeah, someone? totally. Yeah. Yes. Are you sure? Yep. Inside check. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, I'm great. 20. <laughs> pretty good. I have. Okay. <laughs> he seems to be telling the truth. Maybe, maybe not many, though. <laughs> <laughs> I've never paid for anybody before. No. Okay. Mm-mm. Like Captain America, not many? Like, <laughs> yep. Oh. Okay. Pretty close. <laughs> oh, yeah. Frozen and Iceman. Oh, yeah. happen. <laughs> was, okay. was it? Was it someone special? No. At this point, Kiri, who's not that far from you because you're still in the bar, <laughs> says, Don't eat humans, okay? <laughs> yeah, she goes, I'm going to take her upstairs <laughs> and heads off to the to their chamber. No, I'm just going to let you guys kind of take the lead on this. I'm more of like a spectator at this point. With, what are you talking about? Yeah, I, know. Well, yeah. No, I thought we were going out for like an hour. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You sort of jumped conversations. Yeah. We're going to warm up into this thing. I mean, <laughs> no, we're going out for a bit. Right? <laughs> the money, though. There's a oh. big bassy poof, and they kind of feel in your chest. There's a flash of color outside, and there, out maybe 20 feet, you can see looking up Molly as there's like the flash of the firework in the sky going across his, his horns and floor. <laughs> oh, Jesus. All right, let's go, let's go make the rounds. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, God. All right, so you walk out in the sphere, and it's uh, most people who have gathered here, they're, they're sitting there, they're eating food, and they're watching the fireworks as they go off. There's uh, a few folks out there that have uh, the candle dancers. They have these like light candles, and it's this very slow, meticulous dance. They're kind of moving in the darkest places of the corner and give this almost kind of will-o'-wisp type performance. Uh, it's really kind of enchanting and almost borderline creepy at times when you can't actually make out the forms of the dancer in the shadow. Uh, that people are watching and keeping an intent look on it. Um, Otherwise, the rest of this this thoroughfare is apparently here, though you're not sure how much businesses are open since most people are in the process of recovering from a day of business. What do you want to do? Predictably, I would like, as I follow this group around, to keep one eye open for a bookstore. <laughs> <laughs> the nerdiest raver. Can we just, get you a <laughs> <laughs> just hold it up. Bookstore. Okay. <laughs> All right. Donde esta el biblioteca? All right. What, what else are you guys going to do? Uh, I'm looking for vendors. I'm looking for things that are amusing. Yeah, let's head towards the action. Bright lights, colors. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if there's any more of those sparklers or poppers around. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, there's, there, there aren't a lot of them, uh, meaning there's not like an endless supply, but you go back to the same people that are just up the road uh, to the right from the outside okay. of, of the tavern. You can find the same, the same two vendors that you spoke with earlier. You want to want to buy them out real fast? Let's go. Let's go. Steal some. I, I can. We could just pay. You them. said there's like yeah, some flowers. There's like fake them? flowers. That, yeah. That, like it, I want to see if I can find the best okay. looking. Like if there's like that New Orleans Halloween night crazy beautiful. Make an investigation check. Yes. And you make a perception check, Caleb. Perception check. Caleb. God damn it. Oh. No. Maybe that is not the snitch. I'm, yeah, I know, I'm putting it away. So. Just because it's gold is it doesn't natural mean one? it's a snitch. I was two. Oh, so not quite a no. natural one. Um, <laughs> you come upon a number of vendors that have already given out all their flowers, um, so you're having a hard time finding anybody that still have any for sale in this main central Anybody area. I'm looking for is like so silk flowers, really something nice, something <gasps> super fancy if you see anything. I want to look for flowers too then. All right, so we'll come to that in a little bit. Mm-hmm. You I rolled a 19 for Buch. A 19? Okay, good to keep that in mind as we move on. All right, so. We go pick up some more snappers and poppers. All right, poppers so you, and snappers. All right, so you go back to the, those, those two vendors. They're both kind of set up on the side. Uh, the, the one guy with the, uh, the sparklers is still kind of set up there, and the guy with the, with the fireworks is still kind of resting there in the uh, edge. And they have the guy with the, with the, the flowers set up on that side. So there's one guy with the, with the sparklers and the fireworks. Who's there? Kind of the, the thin, somewhat dopey-looking young gnomish guy, and you have the the flower vendor who's just kind of slowly settled into himself, like a like a barrel of a gnome. Not the flower guy's creepy. Just felt like throwing that out there before okay. we approach. All right, thank you. Yeah. Uh, go up to the snapper and popper guys. 
Hey, well, welcome back. Need more packs. No, I want something more powerful. Um. Plus all the packs. Oh, Jesus. I, I, I don't really have anything more uh, powerful than these. Um, Where do you find more can powerful? You, can you make something? Oh, God. <laughs> We're arms be. dealing on fucking party night. <laughs> Selling Dodger dogs. He's, he's at this point like locking <laughs> eyes with you, yeah. not, and there's like a look of recognition in his face. Like, oh. I don't have anything of that variety. I'm sorry. Uh, and not. Uh, do you want to stand? Just stand by me. I'll sort of stand close. back into the shadows and mingle. <laughs> Narc. What's, hey, 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 don't, don't, why, why are your eyes wondering at her? What was that? Sorry, uh, we're closing shop up for the night. No, 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 more no, for no. Sale. give me your packs. And he goes and closes up his little oh. satchel and walks away. Oh, you piece of friend. shit. I'm sorry, that was my fault. Hey, don't ever apologize for no. who you are, man. No, no. You I, can't help that shit, first off. I should have known, I, I can't talk to people. You can't predict when people are going to be shitty. They're always shitty. <laughs> it's a hundred percent accurate prediction. It's pretty. You're, it's a good point. By the way, Bo. Thank you for the other day. When? For talking to Caleb through his, you know. Mm. Yeah, he's a good guy. Just be. Be sensitive around here. I know that that's not your strong suit. Yeah, I But you know, he doesn't deal well with harsh criticism all the time. And you think you do? I'm, I, I'm used to it. That's true. That's tell, point. tell me something. How did you know about this place? Popper Duke? Yeah, how did you know that the gnomes here get down with a funky fresh ry rhythm all night? <laughs> The job that I had before I met up with you guys in the dash, you just kind of, information passes through, you hear things. What job? I worked at a library. The Cobalt Soul Library. What is that? What's a Cobalt Soul? It is a, a faction of monks. What kind of a faction of monks? <laughs> Is not slurring her words. <laughs> yes. Hey, uh, are you evil? Are you a bad guy? No, I don't. I hope not. I think it. I think it differs from day to day, depending on what I'm doing. Do you think I'm a bad guy? I don't think so. Well, that's all that matters, right? But I don't know. You seem to know a lot about a lot of things, and sketchy things too. That has to do with the job that I had before the job that I had. What was that job? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you grew up, didn't you, your parents make wine or something? What was the? Yeah. What was the, so what was the, they got a job? So wait, <laughs> Little Town's girl work, her parents are wine, wine makers. Now you're a brutal assassin martial artist who can kill anything. What happened in between those two things? Yeah, it's definitely something missing, right? Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's, let's just catch up with the others while we walk and talk. Sure. I, uh, uh, my dad was super protective, and I was kind of an asshole and rebelled a lot, so. You? No. Yeah, yeah, um, you know. So when interesting and different people would pass through my hometown, then uh, started making some connections, started getting involved in some mainly illegal trading. Like what? What kind of stuff? I got in really big trouble from my parents because I started siphoning his cases of wine <gasps> and selling them underground for half the cost without tariffs. <laughs> you were bootlegging your old man's hooch? <laughs> yes, I was. Industrious. Wow. Yeah. On top of other things, that was kind of like my big denouement, you know? 
I don't know. I just kind of grew to hate the town that I was in and the system that my father was a part of, and so was everything. He a bad person? He wasn't a bad person. I think he just had bad direction. I think his. I don't know. He could have been a good dad. Man, he was a shitty dad and a good businessman. So. So you took matters into your own hands. Yeah. And got in trouble and was sent off to boarding school. Yeah, kind of. With monks who are librarians and one taught day, you how to uh, kill with your fists. One day he found out about what I was doing after I'd already gotten in trouble for, you know, like a little bit of mild extortion and a little bit of trading, a little bit of trafficking. So I think he was already pretty irritated with me and then he found out about my smuggling scheme with his wine and uh, one day he called me down into the living room and there was a whole group of monks and people in black and I tried to fight them off and they grabbed me and they drug me away. Wait, this was not by choice. You were, you were abducted by monks? My dad paid to get me abducted by monks, yeah. Oh my gosh. He I'm wasn't good. very proud. Well, are you okay? Sure. Was Great. It, was it hard? Uh, yeah, I mean, there were elements that were hard, but everyone has had hardships, right? What's it matter? And besides, he sent me off to the monks. I think he tried to, uh, he was hoping that they were gonna beat my indiscretions out of me. And instead, I think all of the things that the monks, that my father saw in me, that they hated, the monks saw as a potential advantage. So, in a weird way, I think he kind of, it might have been the nicest thing he ever did for me. I, I've never thought of you as an optimistic person, but that's a very positive way of looking at it. I mean, I still never really want to see him again. I don't think he wants to see me again either, so. In fact, he told me he didn't want to see me again. <laughs> yeah, so that's good, yeah. At this point, you guys have caught up with the rest of the crowd as you guys have kind of meandered your way and look up and you can see the rest of your party has been kind of wandering the street. But I do have a nice little wine skin that I kind of keep reserved. Oh. My family's wine, if you want to taste. I would very much. Toss, not the wine. I'll just take a little sip in case we have to do the hour of power later. <laughs> good wine. <laughs> it's pretty damn good wine. Wow. That's amazing. Anybody who else want to sip of my heritage? Yeah, I oh, yes. code for something. Yeah. <laughs> it is hard to believe, but I was able to do the I Dance the Waltz and uh, the Tarantel. It's been many years. Well, you should show me sometime, because I want to see it. I'm very much out of practice, and... We can uh, do it when nobody's watching, okay? I could see you as a waltzer. That makes sense. It does, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really good at the waltz. I believe it. Yeah, they taught me the same time I learned piano. What, uh, is there anything else that you're hiding from us? Any any other quirks or skills? So many, lots of skills. What are three more. I can paint. Hmm? I'm really good at um, baking scones, specifically scones. With, with cinnamon, right? With cinnamon. Scones are hard to make. I know, it's a very tough recipe, the, but the I'm The trick is to it. not overmix. Yeah, you don't yeah, want to yeah. overmix. Oh, what are and, you, oh what are sorry, you we've been walking with your friend Bo. Wait, hold that thought. So that's two things. Yes. And the third The is third thing is something that I want to talk to Ford about, because if he's that inexperienced, then maybe he should take some lessons or something. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Is of the essence. He might be with a with a lady of the night later tonight. You might have to teach him quickly. That's true. And was that skill uh, learned or innate? Cram school. No, no, no. It really was more of a, a learning sort of thing. Yes, study is key. Yes, it's all about studying. That's true. At this moment, Caleb, you and, and like listening to this conversation, your eyes focus on uh, a signpost 
behind her on a building that reads Bent Binders. <gasps> I'm done here. <laughs> <laughs> I walk towards the store. Is it open? Is it open? Uh, no, the windows are closed. Oh my gosh, I press my nose to the glass and try to see what I can see. Is there a lot of books in there or just a few books? Wait, or perception it... check. Okay. I'll go put my nose next to his nose on the glass. What? <laughs> What are we looking for? It's 16. Be like, be All right, as, you, as you look through, the, the, com the combination of the two of you, eventually the glass just fogs up and you can't see anything. Uh, but from the brief moment you had in the inside, it looks like there are a few shelves that contain some books. It looks like there is actually uh, a binding press and like uh, tools for book binding in there. Yeah. But so is it, is it, does it, from what I can tell, does it look like a technical place where they are just making books? Or do they have books for sale? Don't it looks like they have books for sale, but you have, it's too dark for you to see if they're blank. Or if they're actual books at the so moment. I cannot tell if it's a happy or a sad bookstore. You cannot tell yet, no. Okay. Just like Christmas, you must wait till the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any flowers, silk flowers? I was looking for those. Uh, make an investigation check. Yay! Um, yeah, tonight when it doesn't matter, you roll great. Shut up. <laughs> 15. Uh, actually, you. you, you uh, as you guys are like kind of fogging up the window, you pull back and look to the left, and you can see this this adorable little uh, gnome girl, uh, of like uh, deep tan skin, uh, her hair pulled in these cute little puffy buns on the side of her head, and she has this little uh, basket that is just filled with these different colored kind of silk material flowers, and she's kind of standing there smiling, and you can see like an older gnome. Uh, uh, sitting in like a rocking chair behind her with a big old pipe coming out of his mouth, his hat's kind of half covering his face, and he's just sitting there rocking next to her. I hop over next to her. <gasps> I've been looking everywhere for you. Really? Mm hmm. Hi. You have oh, the best flowers I've ever seen, and I would like to buy some. Oh my goodness, thank you so much. Okay. How, how, how much is a flower? Dad, how much is a flower? And the guy's sitting there rocking, he goes, yeah, take him a silver a piece. Sorry, copper. Copper a piece. <laughs> I will buy. Copper. I will buy ten flowers from you. You'll get ten flowers from me. Yes. Look at these button. And she goes and takes out a handful and counts them in your hand. One. How old are two, you? Three. I am five. You are five. That's wonderful. Does your dad take good care of you? Mm -hmm. Yes, he's a good dad. Are you a good what dad? What number is that? I think that, I don't know, I wasn't 13, counting. Was 13. 13. I'll buy 13. I give her two silvers. You know, I happen to have a little girl with me who is very cool, and I think she would like to play with you. What? Mm hmm. She's extra special, though, so you'd have to be very nice to her. Oh, I'm very special, too. <gasps> really? Yeah, yeah. Um, where, where, where do you live? Because I could bring her over and you could play together tomorrow. Oh, uh, we're, the house is two buildings down that way and back one street. You can see it has the red brick on the base by the door. Red brick on the base by the door. I'll come see you guys tomorrow. Okay. What's your name? My name is Jester. What's your name? Tara. Tara, so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Red brick by... She kind of like does this pause, and she goes, "Okay, bye." Okay, see ya. And then runs back and goes, da, 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 and like starts taking the copper and like putting his hand. And he's like, "Oh, uh, that's fine, fine job, fine job." <laughs> pulls his hat up a bit and takes the coins and kind of looks over to you. He's walk away and kind of. Does he seem like a nice dad? Make an inside check. No. <laughs> oh, that's good. Twenty-two. Seems like a nice enough dad. Yeah. Happy Father's <laughs> Day. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else you guys wish to do? Starting to get relatively close to that hour window. Do you want so. many of them? Because I just bought a bunch. Well, I'll take two then. Yep. Flowers? Yes, please. Flower? One, please. Flower? No. Are there any like a, authorities walking the street? Any kind of Crowns Guard or Kings Guard? Or, um, there are Crowns Guard. Um, it's interesting because there are. Half and half. Uh, for for the large gnomish population here, you see half of the crowns guard are gnomish, and uh, many of them have some form of firearm kind of slung over their back, shoulders. Um, the other half appear to be human or half elf, um, and the, the the human half elf crowns guard uh, appear to be less jovial and kind of really 
paying attention to the chaos and generally trying to keep an eye out for anything untoward. Um, Just like sentry, though, they're not concerned or turgid mm, or stiff. I mean, in comparison to the rest of the people that are currently sure. celebrating, yes. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, the, the, even the Gnomish Crown's guards seem to be taking their job seriously, um, but they're still part of the event. Among their folks. Well you, well, you get the sense here that everyone else gets to celebrate and party at this hour, and they don't get to, so right. they kind of cheat yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> a little bit. Um, but the other half are very, and, and honestly, there's more Crowns Guard at night than you expected. Uh, when you came into the city, it didn't seem that heavily guarded, but now they're kind of out in a pretty serious force. Um, you gather probably a combination of whether it being wartime or because the nature of uh, what this city kind of builds. Yeah. And as you're kind of glancing out on the, the outside of the, the ledge of this upper area, even kind of looking down, you can see there are a number of torches out by where the construction yards are down below. So either people are working through the night down there, or there's a fairly heavy presence of Crown's Guard present around these partially constructed devices and uh, machines of war that you saw being worked on earlier in the day. Looks like they even go through the night. That's some dedication. Yeah, that seems like a bit much, doesn't it? Yeah, work ethic kind of choke you in that way. Yeah. Well, it's about that time. Should we uh, make our way back for whatever this is going to be? I got what I needed. I'm ready. Just a second. No, come here for a moment. Yes. Yeah, what is it? Are you going to dance? Well, I think we're going to drink first. Yeah, but later it seems like you want to. I think you should. I do like to dance. Well, you should try it. You should enjoy yourself, but just yeah. make sure uh, that either Jess or I ties your mask on very tightly, yeah? Should I do the spell that you told me, the disguising spell before the dance? I mean, it would not be a bad idea. All right, I'll do that. And all the same, maybe, you know, stay away from direct light, you know, if you can stay a little bit away from it, just. Oh, because the shadows won't match. Yeah, and, and some people are, you know, they're, they're smart and they, they won't, it won't work. Okay, I will. But. But well, you'll, you'll keep an eye out and in case anyone. That is exactly what I'll do. All right. Thank you. You should enjoy yourself. I'll try. <clears throat> If you want to join us, you know, you could just just kind of point and clap. Just sort of off to the side. You don't have to dance. You can just be there like. You guys know that like dancing is about spontaneity and you are planning this dance like when this is going to happen so hard. I am not dancing, so it is not really an issue. Just let well, your it's heart when go. you're performing, you know, you have to have specific moves. Sure. Yeah, you saw the guys who kicked you in the face. They had planned out moves yeah, that like were really cool. Like choreography, that's what we're talking about here. Mm-hmm. Sure, sure. kicks you in the face every time. I like dancing the dance. All right, well, we'll do choreography <laughs> to the right and left, and you can be in the middle and just freestyle. <laughs> <laughs> I think that'll work out, though. Okay, Make sure you use your scarves, though. Do you guys still have one of those wands? What wands? The wand of smiles? I have that. I could tie. I just hit a random person with the wand of smiles as we walk by them. Uh, you see the gentleman who's selling the flower bands is sitting there already smiling and kind of goes. <laughs> <laughs> that guy knows. Here, I, I take off my my belt ribbon oh, and I tie no. it around your <laughs> wand of smiles. Oh. Now you have a ribbon dancer of smiles. How many charges does that thing have? <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> it's probably it for the day. It recharges, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it has a few Over uses time. on it per day. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right, so you guys return to the, the Blushing Tankard Tavern. Mm-hmm. Uh, at this point in time, uh, the music's still blaring. Drinks are being thrown around. You can see a bunch of people are like, ah, oh, hey, it's us, singing big old songs and clanking their tankers together and spilling onto the tabletops. You can see the floor is already kind of slick with spilled liquor here and there. Um, it is it is a party that hasn't stopped since you left. Um, as you guys begin to enter, at this moment, you can see the uh, the dwarven woman who you had spoken with earlier gets onto one of the central tables and like slams her foot in the table. Boof, 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 boof. Everyone kind of starts looking over and she goes, "Attention, assholes! <laughs> Might I have your leering eyes up on this supple and available specimen of a woman?" <laughs> you hear some whistles. <laughs> Woo! 
will say, I will thank you. <laughs> she bends forward with the wink to the crowd. It's as you've all been waiting for, the hour of honor. Yeah, cheers, clapping. And the tokens and titles are at stake. Old Blemmy and his crew hold this winner's tokens for the last three weeks. And she kind of gestures over, and you can see a team there, uh, mostly of, of gnomes. And Old Blemmy is this dwarf with like one giant gash down his face, nope. and like the snow blind eye in that socket, who's sitting there with this tuft of a beard that has been so unkept that you can't see his mouth. It's just this, <laughs> this like gray black kind of salt and pepper bush that just disappears into a chin beard. You assume he's grinning beneath there. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Beer papa. Beer papa. So, so, yeah, it's all, yeah, it's all beer papa. <laughs> They're not willing to let them go. Who wants to put up their coin and their balls to topple these nobodies? <laughs> As folks start standing up and like tossing some coin on the table at her feet, ting ting, like shouting out like, oh, five silver, I, I gold, gold piece, three, three, three gold, three gold over here. And people are standing up, and their groups are starting to get like kind of amped up and ready. She's like, "Oh, keep him coming! Keep him coming!" Tangled, sure. Oh, oh. Tangled. <laughs> oh, by the colorful newcomers! Hi there, sweetie. <laughs> oh God. Do we have more than ten gold here to try and take down these giants of drinking? <laughs> and, uh, there's a moment, and you see this one group in the corner of these kind of coal-smeared gnomes that come from, you can assume now, this is probably a heavy mining town. Um, they're sitting there with kind of elements of their leather work clothes still on, and they're all kind of thinking and talking amongst themselves, and they all pull in a few more coins, and one of them kind of comes forward, still wearing kind of these leather gloves from the day, and pops down. 15 gold. Shit. 16! 18. <laughs> 20 gold! He goes back, starts talking to them, comes back. 25 gold oh, pieces. Come on! <laughs> I don't even know if I want to do it that bad or 20. But I just don't know how to walk away from something like this. 25 and 5 silver! <laughs> So many. Oh, for God's sake, 30 gold. At that point, everyone goes, whoosh, the crowd. Um, <laughs> with a flourish, you place the uh, the uh, rest of the, the 30 gold piece pot on the table. Woo. Soon they'll all be giving me a little bit of gold for this later. So, it turns back and looks to the miners, then they all go, I don't know. <sighs> they, go, out of town in a week. they gather their gold off the table back again and race in. Thank you. Well, if that's it, it looks like our contenders for the night are, what do you call it? Uh, the Mighty Knight. The Mighty Knight! I want to be known for something. This is exactly what I want to be known for. <laughs> yeah. Cheers and clamoring continue around there. Everyone starts shouting and yelling. All right, let's head up these drinks, people! And there's that final <laughs> slam on the table, she leaps off poof, onto the ground and starts heading off towards the, uh, the 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 bar on the side. You can see the other bartender, the gnomish gentleman there, is rapidly clearing out tankards and drinks, and he's starting to pull up bottles onto the countertop. They start pushing tables into the center again no. once more as the crowds begin to circle around, and you can see old Blemmy and the rest of his rather rough-looking crew uh, that have seen They've seen some some life in their time. They're you know, all stars. You no, know, they're all pretty much uh, gnomish middle age, which could be anywhere between 100 to 200 years old, and you can see the weathering on their faces and their clothing. They look like they've uh, they they nearly drink professionally. Yeah. Um, so they all they, they step up to the table and they go ahead and figure out what order they're going to go in. You guys figure out what order you're gonna go Are you going to go in. Uh, it looks like she's, she's, who wants they have, there's five on their team. And uh, as and talking to her, but she goes, "All right, there's five competitors. You need to pick five of your team to compete." Who's the worst at drinking? Mm. Well, I've never been drunk. Then That's maybe you should sit yeah. this one out. <laughs> but maybe I'm really good at it. You don't know. Do we want this to be the thing that we find out on? Yeah, uh, probably not. Gesture. Caleb, mm. how are you feeling? Uh, I don't think I should go late in the game, but I feel capable of this challenge. Thanks. <clears throat> I'm pretty good at it, too. I'm ready for this. I've never had a drink in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Our fucking team captain over here. So who's, who's sitting it out amongst you guys? Who's going to be sitting it out? 
I guess it will be me because well, we need I'm five. A loser. Need five, yeah. So we have eins, zwei, drei, yeah. vier, und fünf. Maybe you can be. I'm taking my five gold back you can, from you, and I'm stomping upstairs. You can be the manager of the team. You can also drink alone, since we'll have to buy your drinks for you. I can also give you some magic mushrooms if you want to slip them in their drinks. <laughs> <laughs> it's fungus, actually. <laughs> oh, but I can work distraction. Yes. You could use your clerical mysticism to confuse and disrupt our enemy. I Talk so many dicks. Back down the stairs. And I <laughs> okay. As you're coming down, actually, you notice just like the crowds are all gathering, and there's like this big circle appearing around the central. They have two tables that are set up um, uh, with kind of a single bench at each end. And you can see a third table behind it where there's probably going to be uh, the, the dwarf woman kind of overseeing this venture. Uh, you do see like this little gnome girl that's walking through the crowd who kind of just like her hands open and Is people are kind of. It's not Tara, actually. <laughs> but but it, it's, it's, a, it's a rather dirty looking kind of gnome little girl who's just kind of like thumbing through and getting pushed around a little bit. Her hands are out in front. Can you give her a little money? Give her silver. Give her silver? Okay, she takes it and kind of. <laughs> Like barely audible voice, and then continues wandering in the crowd. Um, all right, so who's? Um, <laughs> uh, all right, so the five of you guys are doing it. Yep. Yes. All right. At this point, uh, the uh, dwarf woman comes back to the top of the tables. There, looks at. All right, friends. I am but your humble evening mistress, Irina Klomop, and it is my pleasure to present to you tonight's esteemed head-to-head -head drink and battle between old Blemmy and crew and the Mighty Nine. So, first up of Blemmy's crew, we have Duncan. And you see this one this one gnome gentleman come forward, uh, patchy beard, uh, uh, well, I guess more of like a, like, a, like a Stonewall Jackson type of, uh, uh, you know, like the, the missing the centerpiece there. Um, his eyes are kind of bloodshot and red. Uh, his hair is slicked back with some sort of a thick oil. And uh, he's wearing sort of a, a leather apron over just a, a white stained shirt, the sleeves rolled up past his elbows. And he sits up, gets on one end of the table, <clears throat> puts one hand on his tankard, and is uh, waiting for his competitor. Oh. And on the Mighty Nine site, who's competing against old Duncan? Listen, you know, the anchor needs to be you, not you're our ringer. <laughs> All right. right. So I'll I'll wait till there's a, a, a Molly. You want to kick us off? I'll take this in. I'm gonna Riker right over the chair and sit down. <laughs> What's your name? Molly dear. Molly. Yes. All right. So we'll take turns. She goes ahead and grabs uh, this this large, uh, it's a small barrel compared to like a large one, but it's it's, it's a handheld uh, barrel. She goes ahead and pours both of her drinks to the brim. Yeah. yeah. Yes. When I clap hands together, you both drink. It's not first to finish, but it's one drink after the next. First to pass out or lose their drink, forfeits. So. With your drinks full, let's begin! <gasps> With that, I need you to go ahead and roll a constitution check. Just roll d d20, add your constitution modifier. One bit up. Ten. Okay. Um, you watch there as Duncan takes it. No, wait, add your constitution. You got 12. Oh, 12, sorry. Where's my, 12. Where's my grind? You, you're drinking it and it's getting through, it's fine. 12, thank you. Um, uh, you're partway through your drink and he's already finished. Oh. On the table. It was a natural 20 on his end. Oh, yeah. So you finish the drink, and you're like, a little effervescent, but it's there, so that's one loss on your end. How the rules work is the first to three losses is the one in, right. these, in, in these competitive spaces. Oh, so you have okay. to drink fast. Well, I thought it, you just said it didn't matter how It didn't matter, fast. Just, no, that was just how fast he finished. The idea is you both make com uh, competitive constitution checks. Yeah. And the yeah. first to three losses in that competition the is saves. the one that either barfs or passes barf saves. out. Barf saves. Barf saves. Yeah, Copy. Copy. So, at that point, as soon as you guys drop the drinks, next round <laughs> fills up both of them. The, the crowd starts cheering. Go ahead and roll. Come on, Molly. Oh, God damn it. Oh. Eight. Eight. He rolled a two plus Ooh. two. So, yeah. four. so this time around, he finished. You managed to finish a little sooner than him. Put it down. He's like. <laughs> <laughs> Roll again. Uh -oh. Fills up for the third round. 20. You go ahead and finish your drink a little bit sooner than him, plop it down. Oh, uh, and from, the, from behind him, you hear Oblemi go, 
Don't you lose it, boy. <laughs> a voice that grates like it's been slammed across a hundred years of seawater. Molly, how is it? It's rough. <laughs> Roll off again. Mm. 19. Yes. yes. You finish your drink. He takes his next one, pops it down, and you both stare for a moment. <laughs> down the front of his shirt. He's like, oh, the crowd is going to say, no, 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 tries to scoop it back up. They're like, no, I need a wrap. And, <laughs> and you watch as Irina kicks him out of the chair. And he's done. First round goes to the Mighty Knight. <laughs> Oh shit. He gets off the ground kind of dazed. And, oh, you are fucking drunk, Molly. I'm very drunk. <laughs> he kind of topples back to you guys. You see Duncan get pulled back in the crowd, and Old Blemmy's like, oh, shut down. And under his breath, you could hear a, a string of curse words. <laughs> Next up, we have Ruth. And you watch as this kind of rotund, tough looking oval of a, of a uh, gnomish woman come up there, uh, her hair pulled into really, really tight kind of braids on the side um, <laughs> with bright freckles and this grimace. This, this woman has seen some shit and lived. And she gets up to the side, takes the same tank card, and just goes, I'll show you how it's done, Dunking. Feel it! She's got nothing on you. She got nothing on you. you She's this. nothing. Yeah. You got this. You got this. My resting bitch face is stronger, and I jump in. <laughs> I hop up on the table next door and start yelling, Bow! 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 Make a persuasion check. Oh. Oh. Persuasion. I use thaumaturgy to make it sound like other people are chanting with me. <laughs> yes, yes, girl, yes. That's a roll. That's a 21. With that, the crowd starts picking up on Bo, and the, the name Bo, Bo, Bo begins to resonate through the crowd. At this point, you lock, you lock eyes with this gnomish woman, and you can see there should be color, but the irises are like gray, slate gray, and it, it kind of puts you off. There's this intensity to her that, that you, you're like, oh, this is, oh, this is this has a crazy eye. <laughs> Go ahead Do and I roll. have advantage because people are chanting my name? No. <laughs> but people are definitely invested in this victory. Okay. So go ahead and make your first roll. Don't fuck me, Gil. 16. 16. Yeah. You both <laughs> chug slam it down at the same exact time. Both hold tight. It was a tie. Ooh. Oh no, you're getting shit out through this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> They fill up the drinks, and next round, go! Roll oh, for it. Are rough. Mm-hmm. Blue die. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, 21. 21, you both. Why am I so nervous? <laughs> you finish just before, slam the drinks down. Yes. <sighs> oh, not as tough as So, oh. that's one victory on your end there. Yes. Roll again. Solid. Ow. All right, roll again. <laughs> Snap. Fuck! Seven. Seven. This time, she doesn't even break eye contact with these strings. She like tilts to the side and <laughs> finishes it in seconds and slams oh. it down. <laughs> just burps in your direction <laughs> while you're still drinking, oh. and it kind of catches you. So that's a loss on your end. Uh, kind of burns your eyes a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Next one. Uh, oh, fucking shit. Oh my god. Fuck me. Gil, I'm gonna let it go. I'm gonna let it live. Nineteen. Nineteen. No. Twenty. 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 Some no. nice. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. I know math. Nice rolls. These are these are not saving throws, right? This no. is the, this is the actual challenge. Five plus Correct. three. Got it. All right. So on that, as you both fill this next yeah. set of tankards, you drink, 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 and you finish just before she does. Bow slam down, and she's starting to having a tough end. You can see her like grinding her fingers into the the woodwork. These are this is a lot of drinking. I wipe the sweat off with my. So that's two victories to you, one victory to her. Yeah, I'm like massaging her. Fill up the next batch. The crowd's still shouting. Bo, 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 Bo. Next roll. Mm, nine. This time she <laughs> tufts it in, traps it in both hands, and just chugs it down. The foam kind of catches at the corner of her mouth, and she finishes, and she wipes it off and sips it off her finger. Oh, brutal. That's a victory on her end. You guys are both tied. The next roll is going to see who takes it. Winner go home, Bo. Winner go home. I have a cold Bo. Bo. Here we go. Bo. 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 The one, her left eye's twitching as she's glaring at you. Yeah. All right, Gil. Comes down to you, boy. Come on, boy, I got. Jerry roll. He did. He did. Oh! Six. No. Five. Sorry. Five. <laughs> With that, you both chug, chug, chug. Keep maintaining eye contact. Eye contact. You get partway into it, then 
<laughs> and you begin backing up into the tankard. You try and pass it off, and then as you drop the tankard to kind of gather yourself, it just kind of sprays onto the table. Oh, sorry. Oh, the whole crowd worked up for Bo's victory falls into a series of sad ohs. Uh, you watch as Ruth finishes her drink, sets it from the table, and Ruth. Turns around and goes back. I'm sure they got bread around here somewhere. Just find something to soak all that up. Uh, uh, no. Oh gosh. Okay. Next up, we have Valken. You see now this this so this very young, uh, looked like maybe the runt of of his family line uh, of of gnomes, uh, comes forward. Looks very thin, kind of bright eyed, and very stark contrast to the rest of them as he gets closer to the table and sits down. Uh, who's my uh, who's my uh, competitor? Yeah, hello. My name is Caleb. Put it hand, Caleb. It's a pleasure. It's a yeah. pleasure. Best luck. May the may the best gnome win. It's enjoy a good game. Did you just say may the best gnome win? Yes. <laughs> Trash talking. Don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. Keep <laughs> out of your head. Keep out of your head. <laughs> I'm a very skinny man. Let's do this. High metabolism. Oh. Use it. Uh, uh, as as as. Do not oh, no. let me fall asleep face down in the gutter tonight. Won't happen. Okay. That was an option. <laughs> All right. For you. Um, as you, um, as you guys kind of gather, the, the crowd begins to pull in a bit. Um, the uh, uh, the evening mistress kind of leans down at you and goes, "Don't worry, lad. I can see you're nervous, but just let the throat open and take it in." <laughs> Leans back. What am I doing? And first batch, go. Roll off. Grog die. <laughs> Yes! <laughs> 21! Yeah. Oh shit! <laughs> Unexpectedly so, little Caleb finds his taste for alcohol in this one and when but a moment's notice downs the entirety of his glass. Yes! Finishing it before oh, Falcon does. Is that, oh, oh, well done. That's impressive. Yes, it's a good game. It's just a game. <laughs> Fills both of them again. Next round, go for it. So polite. Lorenzo, Libra, Lorenzo, man. When, when, when in. Your confidence overtakes you as you go into the second round of cups, and oh, you manage to finish, but you have to stop halfway through. You have to actually go. I'm going for the second serve. You take it. You take it down and finish it. However, as you pull your glass down, you can see Valkins there leaning. Enjoying the fumes. I can as tell that. Right? Again. Well done. Well Maybe done. Maybe we should do a dance to distract his competitor oh, now. That's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Third drinks are filled. Go for it. Directly in front of Falcon, we start. <laughs> <laughs> uh, both of you guys make individual performance checks. Uh, oh, hey. 19. Uh, it was 15, but 12. <laughs> he does not seem to be distracted, unfortunately. Um, what'd you roll? 13 for me. 13. Yeah. As you take a moment and kind of. <laughs> Nighty mine never says die. <laughs> <laughs> you managed to finally to finish the last bits of it, and it takes a moment. You could feel like all the uh, the suds of the, the the mixtures of drinks you've had tonight kind of billowing in your stomach and churning. You hear the in your stomach. You're like, oh, that's not good. That's a, that's a second loss on your end. Oh, no. uh, that feels no, like it no. go out the back exit instead of the front. They fill it up. <laughs> Next roll. Oh, no. Fourteen. Fourteen. Oh, Come on, With this, you see Valken. <laughs> he rolled a nine. Ah. Plus three. So you win this one. Oh. He doesn't take it and finishes you both within a second of each other. Finish the drink and. Oh. No, I've got this. You got this. I've got this. Caleb, steady. I swat him on the side of the face. No, don't, don't touch. Don't touch. <laughs> do it again. It's no, good. No, it's good for you. Please. It's good for you. Drink. And I say, fill up the last mind. batch. You guys both final roll. Natural 20. <laughs> Natural 13 on his end. And with that, he finishes the drink and goes, told you, booyah. Gets up from the table, turns around, and just <laughs> face plants right in the ground. The crowd goes, yeah, Caleb, pick him up. I nod coolly for a second, and then I just turn and go. <laughs> <laughs> you pull your way away from the table, success is yours. That's, uh, that's now two victories on your end, one for Ruth there, and two final com competitors. Second to last competitor, the powerhouse, the walking brick herself, Tonya. 
and you see now as this this dwarven woman who looks like Rosie the Riveter on steroids comes around the corner. She has her sleeves rolled up past the deltoids. She has these massive hands with a bit of kind of dwarven hair that's kind of gathered on the outside of the forearm. Big square jaw. Looks like missing the two front teeth, and she kind of grins as she sits down. She has most of her hair up and tied into this uh, cloth. She's got a bit of the, the coal smears in her cheeks. Yes, I, uh... <laughs> okay, okay, I'll throw my oh. leg over the chair and sit down. <laughs> All right, Ford. Ah, Double evening record. to you. <laughs> I like Tanya. <laughs> you ever done this before? Oh, like all the time, you. <laughs> no. Voice. <laughs> What well, good I luck then. <laughs> I'm happy to see how long you last, big boy. Fill it up. They filled the drinks. Take your first swig there. Uh, Sixteen. Sixteen. You both finish neck and neck, but you still manage to get it down faster. And as you both stand there, she kind of looks at you with a nod of, of, of being impressed. Not bad, not bad. Is that all there is to this? Oh, we've just gotten started. Fill her up. Fill her up. Fill the next round. Nah, she said you were bad. Uh, 13. She said not 13. Bad. She beats you with a 16. As she goes ahead and finishes off, sets it down, and just waits for you to finish. Our fingers crossed and goes, Q, Q, not as strong as coming out of the gates. Is that all you got? You're gonna lose the wind in your sails no, there, green boy? I, I admit, I feel a little, a little weak. I can't tell if it's the drink or it's your beautiful visage sitting oh. in front of me. <laughs> you hear this voice go, I, 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 he's mine. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fill her up. <laughs> they fill up the two drinks. Mirror image on myself in front of her, what's her name? Tanya. Tanya, and kind of like wiggle to make it look like her vision starting to double. <laughs> <laughs> make a deception check. <laughs> Oh no, that was bad. <laughs> yeah, that was the goal. Yeah. Uh, eight. Eight. Um, you managed to do so. She doesn't seem to be paying attention to you. Caleb, you're getting really nauseous watching Jester do this little dance off to the side. <laughs> Make your roll. Yeah. It's just all of us drunk people going, ah. Natural 20. No! Oh. Okay! That is one smooth semen. Yeah. So that's so that's two victories to you, one victory to her. Um, with that one, you you finish it abruptly, slam it down, and you're like, oh, you're actually gaining ground. That weird swirling in your stomach seems to have faded, and you're, you've come into your own in this game. She's looking, you see the sweat appearing on her brow, she's like, that's okay, there's more where that came from. Fill it up, I got his number, come on. Make a roll off. Hmm? Natural 20. Oh, what the shit? Fucking champ! Not Holy eye contact shit. never broken. Just <laughs> and with that, Tanya goes down. She gets halfway into the drink before, like, uh, uh, sorry, and looks back towards Old Blemmy before she kind of leans forward and stumbles out of the chair. One of the other people picks her up and pulls up the side, and Old Blemmy's sitting there just fuming. Never get into a drinking game with she, a man in the sea. <laughs> she goes, and with that, it looks like Oblemi's team has fallen. That's three victories. Which one, Oblemi puts her hand and goes, goes, Not yet. What? I haven't competed. One of theirs hasn't competed. How about we make a deal? Last fight, double or nothing. Wait, we can win money from this thing? Yeah. It was always about money. No, 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 I thought no, no, we no. only got like tokens or something for free drinks. No, we win money, there's money in it. Double I like money. it, I say we go for I it. I like it as well, but only if you can match this uh, diamond worth oh, about 100 gold. Are you putting in the Well, Give me something like that or there's no deal. They kind of look at each other going, uh, I think that's a little rich for our tastes. Oh. No, no, fuck it. Let's just do it without that deal. Double or nothing. Go on, no. Yeah. She's the worst negotiator ever. <laughs> Change of pace from last year. It's so exciting. <laughs> All my mirror images are like, ah, drink. Who's going to come after me then? <laughs> You got it, no! Right. I've looked in the. By the way, Matt, I've looked in the in the uh, the yes. thing. The the. The don't take a hit. Oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. I'll, I'll try. Hello. Hello, <laughs> sir. This 
This is what you bring before me is the offering. <laughs> you should know that she's called the bottomless pit. <clears throat> I'm gonna crush you, little green one. No. Fucking shut up, not! <laughs> <laughs> Fucking shut up! Oh, Are you want to disguise self? <laughs> no. It's great. When he talks, you just see the bristles of the beard kind of. Uh, you can see as the uh, the evening That's mistress up there, the top goes like. All right, looks like we get to see old Blemmy strain through his baleen after all. Get to the sides of the table. Let the whale take a drink. The, the whale? whale? Oh, oh shit! Oh, shit. <laughs> you are a <laughs> The dwarf sits down. His hand, his mitt, like completely encompasses the tanker with his giant dwarven hand. Uh, against old Blemmy, we have. Um. Uh, 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 hello, I, I'm I'm Otto. Otto. <laughs> Sorry. Otto, the bottomless pit. Yes. And drink. Pour the drinks. Go make a roll. One. Oh. oh. Uh, it's a five. It's a five. You can use it now. Oh. Are you gonna, you're gonna go with it? Yeah, yeah. I'll use it now. All oh, right. Okay, that's better, that's 17. 17. You both <laughs> chug down, you manage to finish quickly, slam it down. Oh, this isn't as bad as you thought. You've had much harder liquors than this. You watch as, as the like, froth is filling at the edges of his, of his mustache, and as he pulls it down, there's this like coating of foam from the drink that's kind of expressing there, and this tongue kind of comes out of nowhere. This kind of cousin it, you know, uh, broom-like beard, this tongue goes and just takes the suds in. Uh, that was a victory on your end, though. Oh, oh, I feel good. You got it, it feels Otto. Good. This, is, this feels yeah. right. Otto. Get it, von Bismarck. All right, all right. Next batch, I can take the roll. I'm take out a little bit of fleece and rub it and, ca and cast Silent Image on myself <laughs> to, to make like just like a pussy eye. Just something real gross that looks just real disgusting. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's a that's a eighteen. Eighteen. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty damn good. Um, so old Blemmy goes and finishes his drink. That's two for two victories on your end there. <laughs> he's not he's not had the he's not had the best luck rolling these last two rounds. Um, finishes it down. <clears throat> You're small. I can see why they call you the bottomless pit. Yeah, BP. <laughs> <laughs> he, gra he grabs uh, the uh, the barrel from the person and fills his own last tankard, hands it off. Let's go. <laughs> go ahead, take a roll. I, can I can I pour this round? Can I can I drink this with a with a mage hand, like just pouring from way up there? If you really want to, yeah, sure. I do. I do. So you're like ah, oh, catching it underneath. The crowd's like yeah, clamoring. <laughs> go make your roll. Uh, oh, only fourteen. Uh, with that, as it's coming down, it's kind of splashing on your face a bit. And you're trying to catch it all. Oh, you you managed to take, you, you managed to catch most of it, and you finish like oh. Ooh, oh, no, that's an, and you realize that the liquors that you've been having are not mixing well with this no. particular drink, and you're starting to feel, oof, that's a, that's a victory on his end there. Oh, no, no, no! Yeah. All you hear is this oh, subtle. <laughs> don't let up. Roll for the don't next one. I don't think I can do it. I don't think I can do it. You got this, man. He's a bastard. Jester, cut him. Drink, cut him. He can't <laughs> see out there. Cut him. Open my eyes. No, I just got to. You got this knot. You got this knot, and I'm going to cast Bless. Oh. What does okay. that do? It gives you, uh, I think it gives you advantage on Stop. on saving throws. Is this a saving no. throw? No. <laughs> but you're blessed. <laughs> you. All right. All right, make your roll. That's a 21. Ah! He rolled a natural 16 with a plus four modifier. That puts him at 20. Ah! <laughs> Break the thing! Break <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> As you both finish the drink, <laughs> everyone's like, yeah! oh! The whole crowd kind of backs up for a minute. Not! And uh, uh, at, at this point, Old Blemmy leans forward and goes, Wait a minute. 
Are you a fucking grease? <laughs> and just like passes out right on the table. It's just like the saliva just kind of pulls before him. <laughs> the crowd goes wild. Um, Irina leans down and kind of like fiddles through his pockets and pulls out his token and goes, I do believe that you've earned this. Thank you. There we go, our name's on the board. What, what does this get me? <laughs> oh, I'll get you free drinks here for the rest of the week or until someone takes it from you. Free drinks? Guys, we can drink more. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. You guys look like shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's three of you. My mouth no, is No, there are, yes. My mouth is watering. Yeah. Let it be known that the Mighty Nine can take on any competitor <laughs> and win! Victory will be ours in any arena! <laughs> yeah! Cheers, go up there. You see already there's somebody off in the corner who's whittling a block of wood and carving the Mighty Nine into it to put on the wall. Uh, the rest of Old Blemmy's team begrudgingly come up and kind of drunkenly pass forward their tokens and pass them over to you. So you have five drink tokens. Five of you can drink for free at this bar. Oh, yeah. Well Great. worth it. Yeah, um, <laughs> is there money involved and here? It was a double or nothing, so it's 60 gold. They, they ended up having yeah. to pony up the rest of it. There was a 20% cut for the house, though, so at 60 gold, uh, losing 20% of that. I'll, yep. take, I'll take 20 of that because I, I put in the top. Uh-huh. So. Yeah. so that's 48 gold to go back to you guys. I say five because I gave Molly five. Mm-hmm. Okay. Everyone kind of goes and claps you on the back and start cheering and shaking your hands and stuff. And like, oh, that was amazing! Yeah, like, oh, that's right. Cool. Easy. <laughs> Tell me you have like biscuits and gravy or something. Yeah. <laughs> we will in the morning. Right, chicken. Oh, that'll be yeah. perfect. Do you have a water burger? <laughs> well, if you're looking for a meal. No oh, god. Oh yeah. She wants to fuck your brains out. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> you know, I think I, I have some more uh, no, Ford. libations in me. Ford, why not? We're, no, we're I, in Hopper Duke. I know. Duke the, it up. The night is young. It's young. I can crash in another room. It's perfectly it's fine. It's young, darling. We do have an extra room. No, it's fine. Plus He's good. too drunk to fuck. There's no well, other ladies as that's well. So there. I'm no. fine. I He's do. a little embarrassed. <laughs> His that's penis not, gets a little limp wow. whenever a few days. Yeah, it is not at <laughs> it's all. nothing personal. She doesn't know me like that. It's not real. <laughs> I have a friend who's an herbalist to ask something can help with that. You have a friend who's a <laughs> yeah. Do you have a topical cream? Never mind, that was a where's different your, problem. Where's your pisser? <clears throat> oh, it's uh, up uh, third floor. There's a, a bit of water closet. Just aim for the hole, please. I'll, and I'll I don't right back <clears throat> It's his penis problem again. <laughs> <laughs> what? You guys are trash. You are very, you are, you, mm. you are, you are very drunk. It's very observant. Am I also very drunk? Can you feel this? Slap! I assume I take one hit point of damage. Or, <laughs> or four, or one d4 <laughs> from a monk. I'd say you take a hit point. Okay. Yeah, you're drunk, you're real relaxed. Yeah. <laughs> Did you feel that? Oh, the mighty nine is the mighty now. nine. The mighty nine is the mighty nine. The mightiest <laughs> nine that ever nine. I like that song. <laughs> nine mighties, mighties, nine. You guys need to go to bed or something? I think I'm going to puke. I'm totally fine. This <laughs> <laughs> is pretty normal, actually. No, this is great. Caleb. Not, not, you, not you, too bad. you are intoxicated. You are I thought we were going dancing. I'd do anything. <laughs> oh, shit. I can surf on a truck. <laughs> <laughs> I was just, give me five minutes. I'm going to go out. I'm going to go behind the alley. I'm going to barf. I'm going to clean myself up. <clears> and then I'm going to go back in a little bit more put together. You right. can rally. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna ask Caleb to waltz with me. All right, uh, okay. No, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. Oh, so well done. Right. You were great out so there. So, in the midst of, of, of everything dying down, uh, people are, you know, they're starting to get pretty sloshed, and the energy level, while it's still, you know, rather uh, rowdy, some folks are starting to tap out for the night. Um, as, as Jester goes ahead and drags Caleb into the center of the tavern floor. Takes hands, uh, and Caleb almost running on autopilot, who does have some minor experience in the past. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and make a performance check with disadvantage, Caleb. That's cocked. That's okay. <laughs> that is with advantage, you say? Disadvantage. Disadvantage. You're drunk. It's very low. <laughs> very low. That is a five. Because you're drunk. So, Caleb, if a moment passes before Jester begins leading you. Yeah. But you guys continue, the two of you, to 
have a very nice little waltz in the middle Aww. of the area. Yeah. Kind of quietly, the music begins to change. What was once kind of the the, the rowdy bar music kind of transitions into an actual waltz piece as the musicians notice this happening. Mm -hmm. And the uh, the three-fourths, you know, begins to pick up. Three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, as you guys continue to dance, a few other uh, couples begin to get up and start kind of faking it. They don't seem to know, but they're kind of watching and playfully making up their own waltz type maneuver. And like a, an impromptu half assed waltz begins to develop here in the center of the tavern. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> we'll dance a bit. Mm. So you guys begin to join this as well. Uh, which one are you leading? I'll lead. All right. Absolutely. Yeah. Molly's leading. Uh, <laughs> not at, at his beck and calls. You guys You're now begin to kind of lead. dance around in a circle. <laughs> Bo and Ford, you both there, kind of drunkenly staring at this. I actually did not come back down. Oh, that's right. You're still upstairs. <laughs> and I'm. Ford has passed the fuck out upstairs. <laughs> and you pass out? I might have passed out in the pisser. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, out there dancing. Uh, uh, you are always a better dancer than me, Astrid. You were so good. Astrid? Yeah. Oh, well, you know, Caleb, you've away. been a good dancer. Oh, Astrid. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Caleb, do you need to go to sleep? Uh, yeah, just walk, walk, uh, stumble away. No, 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 I grab his jacket. Yes, you're way stronger. You are not going to go pass out in the street. You told me to be in charge of this, and I walk him upstairs and Good make sure friend. he gets in bed. Good Okay. Friend. Yeah. yeah. So Jester goes and tucks Caleb into one of the rooms in the bed comfortably. Ah, uh, blue. <laughs> yes, I am. And you're very nice and a little stinky. <laughs> One of those things is true, and <laughs> you are blue. I'm sure Astrid loves you very much. My document. Okay. I'm gonna grab Bo before we head up. Yeah, I'm coming on the door. Okay. Let's keep going. Got you. Got you. All right. What? Is it all right if I try something? No, yeah. nothing like that. I just want to. I will fucking punch you if you try and kiss me. Oh, God. Uh, I know it's a trap. I know I'm attracted. Normally? How is your hangover? <laughs> Whatever team you're on, I'm not sure I play for that one. <laughs> team fuck off, I'm well aware. <laughs> How are your hangovers normally? I, I'll normally like wake up and I sweat it out. I got, um, a, I got a weird thought. I don't know about this. Uh, this may feel weird. I'm going to try my blood maledict. What? Um, I'm going to do the uh, the. Uh, um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to do the uh, 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 predation uh, advance to see if I can cure a hangover with it. I don't know if it'll work. Technically, it's a poison, and I'm willing to drop some HP into this. Um, it gets a little fancy, and it's like mostly cool. just to see if I can like clean it up a little bit. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. Are you going to amplify or not? Oh yeah, I mean, I, I, mean, like, I want to see if it works. No, right. I'm a hot uh, mess and I like it. Go ahead and make a constitution saving throw, Bo. Saving throw? Yes. yes. Oh, God, this one does this every time. It's a yeah. fucking tease. Yeah, I get rid of that one. Yeah. It's kind of a dick. Six. Six. Uh, you managed to sober her up a little bit, but you're still pretty tipsy. But if from going blackout drunk, you're now just li like heavily buzzed and. Like right out, right at drunk. I feel like this could be very useful. I'm going to work on this. What's, yeah. inter what's interesting is, is as you finish this, you watch as out of some of the pores, the actual alcohol is drawn out, Ooh. hovers in the air for a second before <laughs> dropping onto the ground. No! What? Yeah. No, it was a party foul. <laughs> I wouldn't touch that. <laughs> oh, I was curious that, that I would. Inside of me? What did you did you touch inside me? <laughs> oh, thank you for being part of my little experiment. All right, now what? Oh, now I was, what? I was, I was just kind of curious if I could pull liquor out of people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna go throw up on Ford. Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what you get. Oh, oh no! no. <laughs> I'm gonna, go find Ford? I'm gonna find Ford and make sure that however I throw up, it makes it look like he did it to himself. 
And then, oh, no, no, not like, not like that, not like that. Uh, <laughs> all right, so. All right. Not like this. Not like this. <laughs> Do you leave Ford in the uh, in the bathroom? Oh God, no! I bring him back. Okay, in the too. okay. Like you guys all make yourselves oh, yeah. back to your rooms. Uh, as you go and check inside, you can see Yasha is asleep in the corner, just there with her sword on the side, ready, and then kind of curled up against her chest is Kiri, also asleep, kind of just bundled up, a little. Little uh, bustle of uh, feathers. <laughs> she tried to shake her. <laughs> um, you guys eventually find yourselves to rest for the night, sleep. A long, arduous morning comes to as the sun comes up through the windows. The sound of uh, distant, wandering uh, roosters crowing at daybreak kind of break you into consciousness, and the hangovers are real. Uh, Bo's doing okay. It's a little, a little bit of a hangover, but not too bad. Jester's yeah. totally sober. Yasha's sober. Sober. I'm doing ribbon dances in the bedroom. Great. Fuck uh, off. As Jester and as as you and Bo start getting ready, you guys start gathering your things. And Bo, your coin purse is missing. <gasps> Motherfucker, who did it? Chester. Hmm. My corn point. Corn key. Fuck, fuck, <laughs> fuck, I'm still hungover! God damn it! What? My coin purse is missing! Her coin pond. Her coin pond! Her money is gone? Is my money still on me? You still have your money on you. I still have my money. What happened to oh, yours? Fucker, there was like 300 gold in there. Oh, oh shit. You should really spread it out. <clears throat> Bo! That's really not good. Should we go looking for it? Maybe you dropped it under the bed. Can I start looking around there? Make an investigation check. That's not gonna be under the bed. Someone's gonna fucking die. <laughs> um, 16. 16, you spend a few moments looking around and it's nowhere to be seen in the room. I think somebody might have taken it from you. Yeah, yeah. I think that's exactly what happened. Oh no. I wonder if that's a common thing when people get drunk like that. <laughs> We're gonna go talk to Irene right now. I bet she knows the motherfucker. We're gonna fucking track him down. Irina? Whatever that bitch's name is, let's go! <laughs> All right, is everybody else waking up? Sure. Yeah. Hey! I knock on the doors really loudly. <laughs> Check your coin purse! Oh, wow! Make sure you have your money still! What's wrong so with you? Do we have our money? No. Wait, none of our, mo all of our money Not is gone? Molly, Ford, your coin purses are gone. <gasps> and we're gonna take a break. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I, I like it way more in there than that. We just got fucking, oh. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. I was feeling comfortable about it. Caleb, does Caleb have his money? All two Five goals. Of my goals. <laughs> Do I have my motherfucking books? Your books are still with you. What about your diamond? Uh, your diamond you keep with your components, so yeah, yes, that wasn't missing. It was just the coin purse missing. All right, guys. Here's the deal. Wait, we're taking Take a break. break. No. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm so angry. I know. Fuck. Hold it. Hold it. <laughs> I love that woman. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we'll be back here in a few minutes. Uh, stay, stay tuned for the break. We have uh, Jason Charles Miller's uh, video about his awesome, uh, his awesome album. Check it out. We'll see you here in a few minutes. Oh, no. And welcome back. So, <laughs> returning to where we were, the Mighty Nine coming to consciousness, most of them with a roaring hangover, have come to realize that all of their money has been pilfered, other than Jester, uh, and Yasha, everything else, everyone appears to at some point during the evening lost their uh, their monetary gains. So, as you guys are finding this out, what do you do? I accuse Jester of <laughs> stealing our money. Why would I steal your money? You're right, it's stupid. That but is really dumb. We, as detectives, yes, should think clearly about this. Okay. And figure out when was the money stolen. 
Did you all have your money after the the, the competition? Yeah, we, we put our winnings, we split it up and threw it in the back. Between okay. the competition and bedtime, our money was stolen. Mm -hmm. So it had to be somebody that seems inconspicuous walking around the room and stealing people's money. It's that damn bird. Cutie. I think she'd be kind of noticeable downstairs taking people's money. Is Kiri, is Kiri with us? <gasps> But Kiri is with Yasha. Kiri, did you steal our money? Kiri, kind of go fuck yourself. Yeah. yeah. Don't no. nope, stop there. She's, she's so a kleptomaniac, so I can tell. Cute. Okay, so I might be able to help us. How? Also, there was this little girl who seemed really sweet, but she was walking around kind of like inconspicuously throughout the room, and maybe she did it. I also don't think this was necessarily a one-person job. Normally, there's a couple people doing stuff like that, or one person is a runner and one person Maybe is a looker. Maybe you should ask Irina if it happens often when I these things go on. I thought you said you had something. Oh, yes, I have a spell that can locate objects. Oh, well, that sort of cuts down on our detective work a lot. <laughs> well, I could locate potentially, yeah, yeah, like a money purse. You remember what my bag looked like? Well, yeah, of it course. It matches my... My sash that you yeah, still have this on, on wand. this wand. Yes. Huh, I almost forgot we tied yeah, that off. That's funny. I know, right? <laughs> that's a good night. I know we were drunk. Can you just bring the, the volume <laughs> level down? Sorry. Just a little bit. Sorry. Sorry. But it was only the five who competed who were robbed. Well, it was the only five who got stupid drunk. Who um, we were robbed. We were super drunk. But it we could be because we won drunk. and Blemmy's crew stole our money. Could be. Could be. Why don't we. Oh. We should find out if Blemmy's crew also got stolen from. Yes. Do we remember if Blemmy's crew hung around the tavern afterwards? Uh, to your memory, they didn't. Uh, uh, shortly after the competition, kind of tucking their tails, they went to find another place to drink and not have to be in the eyes of people that watched them lose. Okay. Okay. So we're going to talk to Irina, mm -hmm. and then we're going to maybe find Blemmy, or maybe just follow, locate object. We are not mm -hmm. going to start with the spell that will lead us to it. How, what's the range? I say we start the spell now in case they decide to throw away the coin purses. Unless somebody knows something that was in their purse that was actually of value that they well. could recognize. Ooh, and some bacon. Does anyone have money for bacon? I still have money. Oh, bless not. You. Did you have any of those trinkets, like my jade bracelet in your bag? And with your money? It. Fuck! <sighs> No, I only keep, I only keep my valuable things in other pockets. It has to be within a thousand feet, so and we it only lasts for ten minutes. Maybe we within should within a how many feet? A thousand, no. which is not that far. Let's see if we can on. get some tips. What if? There's something later. What if I cast Zone of Truth on Irina? It's not a bad idea. Well, let's see if she just talks first. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah but how will we know if she's telling the truth? Hmm. She seems shady as fuck. Does she? I haven't talked to her. Yeah, I don't like her at all. Let's try, Ooh, let's try not to, could... to escalate anything too quickly yet. <laughs> Molly could use his masculine wiles to I think Floyd should do it. Do I have masculine wiles? <laughs> you have pan. Pan Wiles. I'm into it. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> the affected creature is aware of the spell. Yeah. Always. <laughs> let's let's. let's why, don't, why don't we save that for the moment that we have somebody we definitely want to interrogate, yeah. who may just instead of somebody who just might tell us let's they don't just know. Let's go down and talk to Irina. Yeah. We go looking. And for get Irina. breakfast. I think All she right. did. It. You guys head down to the bottom floor of, of the uh, the tavern, and I mean, it is empty. From seeing it so busy the night before, it is just 20-odd empty tables. Uh, there is Irina at the bar, who's currently sitting down in the process, eating what looks like a sandwich, quietly looking probably a little hungover herself. Um, you do see, sitting on the far table, uh, kind of in the middle of cleaning up her fingernails, is Rissa. No. She did it. We should get them at the same table and ask them questions because they have to be within 15 I don't think feet of each other. She's been nice. Against each if other. It was, if it was Rissa, what is she still doing here? Yeah. Oh, good point. I still think she did it. I'm thankful for your CD background right now, Molly. 
let's get some breakfast before anything happens. We yeah, have with what fucking money, Molly? Put it on a jar. Yeah. With my money. It's not the first I'll time I've been robbed. Breakfast. Irina! You're welcome. Good morning. Now you're all looking uh, appropriately fucked. Um, yeah, in a few ways. Uh, what, what can I get for you? Just one way. Sorry. <laughs> Bacon! <laughs> breakfast can be done. Let me go. Uh, Sid! Sid! More breakfast! Irina, did you see anybody taking all of our money last night? <laughs> No, why? Did someone take all your money last night? Does it happen all the time when people do this? If you're not paying attention, you have a lot on you. Well, that's your own fault. Do you know anyone? That's their little side hobby. I don't know anyone particularly, but it happens sometimes. That's why most folks that go out only take a few coins with them. You should pull up shit. Ah, the fucking kids had like, like six coins on them. Happens all the time. If you're walking around with a bank in your pocket, I mean, you're asking for it. Three gold situation. Oh, no. oh, Wait, did you guys, what did you guys do with our cart? It's out front. Yeah. But it's it was strung up. It was, it was yeah. tied to the hitching Would you have woken up in your drunken stupor? Of course I would. We'll go check. Yeah, we go look at the cart. Is it still there and protected? Okay, you turn around and the cart is protected. Uh, there are crowns guard that kind of patrol the main area. Um, it's not as busy as it was last night, of course. It seems they come out in full force. A lot of them seem to sleep during the day and then come out at night to keep watch because that's when a lot of things right. happen. Um, but there are a few, there's one that's posted on the far corner. It looks like nobody's messed with the cart because it is kind of out in the open. Should have left our money in the cart. Excuse me, <clears throat> can I have a mi- uh, minute of your time? Are you referring to? The crowd's guard. Okay, so you've, you've exited the tavern. Now. Yeah, I'm walking out. I'm sitting down to breakfast. I'm going okay. back in the tavern. Yeah, Me the, too. The food is being brought out to you slowly over the next 30 minutes or so. Uh, the crowd's guard looks to you. You can see it's human, kind of a, a, a bushy, not really well kept uh, blonde beard. Morning. Over. I'm sorry. Morning. You go first. Yeah. Uh, you you, you, kinda, you all right there, buddy? We kind of tied uh, tied one on last night in a, in a harsh way. <laughs> um, I can see you're newcomers to the town, then. Indeed. Uh, So much so that we seem to have uh, been relieved of our coin during last night's revelry. You don't say. Yeah. Does that uh, happen a lot around here? Two uh, conspicuous folks, maybe. It happens every now and then. We try and keep an eye out there. There, As with any place of business, there is always going to be some element of theft. Uh, Nothing we saw out of the ordinary, but we can begin to investigate if you'd like. Well, maybe that might not be necessary. I, I believe it was our fault. <laughs> but just out of curiosity, is there anywhere in town that, I don't know, there might be like an infestation of this sort of problem? Or do you know any common areas where folks engaged in this sort of activity might gather at night or in the day? Uh, areas of trouble that you've dealt with before. Oh, God, am I sweating? You are, profusely. Yeah. Um, I can't say there's a specific region. Uh, if. If anything, the the workplaces here are not teeming with that element. Uh, the, the industrious nature of the city kind of keeps itself in a, a busy and very uh, visible place. Perhaps, I mean, somewhat here in the, the idle work shelf, there's the, the residential areas um, of the Silver Falls, but that's, those are probably the more likely areas. I wouldn't look to the, the lower half. Up here in this shelf and beyond would be probably the Silver most, Falls. but Rip. we'll, are you sure? I don't mind. Uh, could probably keep an eye out. Is there any information you have about who these individuals who robbed you may be? We're a little light on details, unfortunately. You know what? I'm gonna go eat a, a half a cow, and then maybe once that's soaked up some of this, I'll return. Yeah, if I, remember I think else. you should go do that. All right. Thank you. Have a good morning. You too. Back and sits back to his post, looking a bit confused. Ask. Irina, about the little girl. Mm -hmm. Irina, what about the little girl? I don't know what you're talking about. Which little girl? There's a little girl that was walking around last night that was asking for money and stuff. Oh, the beggar. She comes in every now and then. Some folks kind of help her get along. She doesn't steal things. Don't that I've seen. She's like a weave. What are you talking about? Um, Make an inside check. Is she lying to me? Does she know more? Yeah, it's 12. 12? Yeah. I mean, as best as you can read, she seems to be forthright. As best as you can read. I'm gonna cancel the truth. Oh. Okay. 
So what's the saving throw on that? I like DC? Charisma. Cut to the fucking chase. 15. Trim the fat. Uh, no, she fails. She goes like, what's, uh, what, 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 what's going on? What are you talking about? Because if I recall, uh, yeah, she is aware, aware she's aware of the spell. She's like, what sort of trickery are you doing here? I don't like this, I'm gonna ask you to leave. Oh, I don't think you need to do that. I'm just, you know, curious about what happened last night. If you have ever seen any shady figures in here. Uh, there are many shady figures that come through here. It's a town. What, what? Do you know of anyone who would have stolen coins from people? Who was here last night? There was a lot of people here last night. I know you're asking me. I, look, <laughs> I'm a shady-looking character sometimes as well. It's, I can't pick it. There's a lot of hard-working people here. Did you steal the money? I, I did not steal your money. Steal the money. I'm just checking. Do you know who stole no, the money? No, I don't know who stole no. your money. But Marissa, if, come here for a second. But if you were going to suspect somebody, who would it be? Um, I don't know. I, you, you damn well pissed off old Blemmy. He's a possible <laughs> one. That's a good one. Um, otherwise, uh, and if anyone got too friendly with you last night, I mean, you got to get close to take your money. Friendly with you guys? Not with me. Yeah, I didn't. Say, I didn't send any people up to your rooms because you told me not to pay for it. You're holding your cash, which I've still got, by the way, and the offer still stands. But <laughs> is there a thieves guild? A fair offer. I don't know. Probably. Risa, come here. Would you? Would Risa you? Comes up. Oh, I can help you. Irina, would you? If if Molly was interested, would you like? Uh, Snip. His. No, just like I, don't, like. I don't understand what you're trying to imply. Right, never here. mind, never mind. Let's go to Rissa. Rissa just. What, 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 what was this? No, seriously, though, what cut. was this? What was that? Why is this having <laughs> sex? Yeah, how is this? This. Don't you guys use scissors when you have sex with each other? Is this, an, huh? is this a goblin thing? Yeah. This might be a goblin oh, thing. Scissors. Yeah. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. Just hold all attachment shields around. Risa. Risa comes out this way. Do you know of anyone? Right, right. Do you know of anyone who steals money from drunk people? Not personally, but I'm sure there are folks out there. Did you see anyone taking our friend's money last night? She kind of rubs her temples, and you can tell she's a little hungover herself too. She's like, no. Those do those two gentlemen come back into the bar at any point? Fitz and Ashton. Fitz and what's his name? Ooh, good call. I saw them kind of come in at one point, but then leave when they noticed I was still hanging with you folks, so thank you for that. I appreciate that. I mean, at the very least, that'll be fun. Man. What do not? we have any other questions to ask? Who are so you all attracted to? Do you guys like me? <laughs> That's what I was trying to get to. Do you Wait, like us? us? Yeah, do you Wait, like we us? have to answer. Yeah, because we're standing next 15, to me anyway. <laughs> if you're within 15 feet. You're not my type. Okay, so if, if, if all yeah, the rest of you are in the area. Everybody's my type. I'm really. <laughs> I was at the door. Pretty, I don't know how big the place if any, is. If anybody else steps into that zone, you have to make a saving throw. <laughs> no, I, was the door. I was going to do something before so just what? to do yeah. did. what? Yeah. What? What was your question? Who are you attracted to? Do you like me? Are we friends? Do you really like me and stuff? Make a saving oh, that throw. That was a layer of questions. I like you. You're nice. Really? Yes. Charisma, right? Yeah. What is it? Charisma saving throw? 16. Oh, yeah, you, you resist it. I like you a lot. Here's the deal. <laughs> <laughs> Has there been a raise in criminal activity? Is there something in the town that would start Provoking people to want to pickpocket more? Is the rise in the war effort bringing people down? There's got to be some reason. Marissa goes like, I mean, it's, it's, it's possible, I imagine. People are distracted, they're working hard, they're having to push out double time a lot of their, their work to get things out to the front lines. Um, Flitz gave you. It's possible. Is that what is that saying? Like Whoever took our purses has our, has our drink tokens too. I do oh. have our drink tokens. I was in the bag. You didn't need a reminder. She's ready to pop as it is, all right? Well, I'm just saying that if drink tokens come back to the bar. Then you know. <sighs> I wouldn't come back I the next either. night if it were me. I would want to make sure that we were gone. Mm hmm. But somebody's got them. Yeah. 
how could, Irina. They, how could they even use them? Because only the winners, the the, the winners that everyone saw, they're won probably them. Probably not going to use them. They're just one what? drink. It's not the they would oh keep all the drink. hundreds yeah, of gold. Yeah, yeah. But, but I would keep it though. But I think that could be a better target for your lost oh, object spell. Mm-hmm. That's what yeah, I was yeah, thinking. Because yeah. it probably blends in. Is it? Are they sa- the same sort of shape as regular With coins? Coin? They are, but they're wooden and a little bit bigger than an actual gold coin. Okay. Anytime I've stolen something I couldn't use later, I've always kept it for sentimental reasons. I'm not sure why. Mm. Yeah, it's a prize. It is. It's a reminder of you your good throw job. It away, can you? That's smart. It's yeah. good that we Should have I cast it? Steal no, no, more. Hang on. Much. Hang on. Sometimes. God. Yeah. Irina. Yes, what's he asking? Do you have any new staff members? Hey, you. No, it's just me and Sid. Okay. And at this point, he Sid brings out the last of the food. Uh, the male gnome who you saw when you first entered is like kind of. <sighs> so, all of your food is ready. Bless. Enjoy. You mentioned being able to get us friends and other type of services. Where do you find those resources? Through a friend of mine. What's her name? Why are you asking me all these questions? I didn't send anyone up to your room, and I'm not going to spill all of my business propositions your direction. I don't think you did any of that at all. I just think you might know who did. Even if you don't consciously know, think you have an idea. Not really, lass. She's telling the truth. Yeah, do you give a shit about our problems? No. There you go. <laughs> Reese, do you know where this uh, Ashton and Fit Fitz stay? And she just kind of nods and takes another sip of her like morning coffee and goes, "Hey, they're um, they're about up two blocks down from my father's sh- shack. Um, a couple of kids that usually, although this hour they're probably working at the Anvil. If I wanted to go hawk some stolen goods, where would I go?" I don't know. I haven't hawked stolen uh, goods around uh, here. I'm money. sorry. Listen, Nobody has to hawk. One more question. Still to which one? Jason. You have, you have, you have both of us. Irina, uh, where does the pianist live? What, the, of the band? Yeah, the, the, the guy playing the piano. Here is a room on the third floor. <gasps> well, maybe if I cast Locate Object, maybe. we'll find out. But what's his name? We never asked. Oh, you he never asked? He was really uh, talented, though. I mean, like, super uh, duper. Uh, he was, uh, Weimar. Weimar. I made him flip a page for that one. It did, yeah. exciting. Yeah. Why don't we uh, start by going around where Fitz and Ashton lived, and then maybe yeah, we can first. pay a little visit to you know Reese's Pops. Fish? We'll go to the, yeah, she, she said it lived yeah, near we'll her, go, her, her Pops' we'll, place. we'll go, and I'll cast Locate Object, okay. and maybe we'll just pass by something. I wanted, I wanted to, to meet Pops anyway. He sounds interesting. She kind of like... <sighs> All right. Fair warning. Pardon. <laughs> Rough morning. Yeah, we know. We we feel that. So, so where are you on? Are you looking for for the boys at the at the uh, Steelbringers Forge first, or going to my no, pop's we'll go, place? We'll go. To, we'll go to, to your father's place first. I think we'll we'll maybe just if we're in the mood. What? Hop in. Hop into their place by them. Yeah. They're not home, perhaps. Who? What? The Fitz and yeah, that night? Uh, okay. Well, follow me. Follow me. She gets up and finishes her coffee, sets it back down. You guys kind of take whatever scraps remain of your breakfast and then make your way back out into the street. Pocket bacon, before we leave, I ask Irina, who's still in the zone of truth, are you really interested in Ford or are you just flirting with him because, you know, it makes you some money and stuff? Both? I'm a businesswoman, but I've got my needs. Oh, okay. (laughs) Thank you. I guess we'll get the object on the coins. Already? Okay. We're not there yet. Now? The last okay. 10 minutes. Okay. What if it's in the tavern still? Makes sense. Okay, so you cast it here in the tavern. You're not getting anything. Let's run! We're gonna, we're gonna put yeah. you on a cart, and we're gonna take the cart. I feel like we'll walk faster than the cart will go. Will we walk faster than the cart will go? I mean, in the town, getting the cart around is, right, can be a bit of a pain. Yeah. It's comparable, but you also have to deal with the cart. All right. So Let's it's go. your choice. Let's walk quickly. Yeah. All right, so with that, uh, Rissa leads you further through the shelf. Um, 
At this point, once again, the, the town is fairly quiet, and most folks that you do see in the street are in the process of carrying supplies. There are a few horse-drawn carts that have stacks of metal ingots that are being taken from above or below, or vice versa. Um, you can see partially made metal plates and you know curved uh, structures of larger things that are being developed and created separately and then all being brought to a singular location, probably down near the artillery yard. Um, it's, it's, it's just a very interesting black and white kind of you know day and night uh, separation of how the people live in this city. Um, a short jaunt around, probably uh, uh, the spell does fade before you get there, but you're still not picking up any blip. Um, about a few minutes after the spell fades, you get to the outside of uh, a small shack. Uh, it's got kind of like metallic siding uh, that are rivets into it. You see it has a roof that is uh, metal sheets. Uh, there is a smokestack on top that is giving out this kind of lazy smoke uh, drip that kind of makes its way into the sky. Uh, and a sign out front that says Tinker Top Inventions. Aww, when we get so there cute. after our run, I chuck up a little salsa into the back of my throat oh, and swallow God. it down. Oh. Really? Really? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she goes, ah, uh, the like rolls her eyes. <laughs> and um <laughs> Rolls her eyes and kind of knocks on the, the metallic door. Ting, ting, ting. Yes, come in. Dad, it's me. Uh, I, I have some friends here. They just want to say hi. They got thieved. Oh, that's all right. Come on in, certainly. Uh, she opens the door, and on the inside, you already hear what sounds like the whirring of hundreds of tiny clockwork objects. On the inside, you can see wall-to-wall -wall clocks of all sizes. Um, some broken, springs exposed, some that are fixed and just clicking away, some that have small sculptures that kind of move in a circle around a central area. Um, you can see what looks to be partially made pulleys. You can see small toys that are kind of set up in the corner, uh, some wooden, some metal, and all of them seem to have some sort of built-in clockwork locomotion to them, though they are currently still. Um, there are two sets of lanterns that are hanging in the back, kind of giving the faint light, which is kind of, as you enter, uh, giving this dark silhouette to a lot of these objects, but as you walk into the light and look behind you, you can see the detail work in them, and they're, they're very beautiful and very well made. Um, and it's at that point you hear a You glance over and you can see, uh, hopping up and down, kind of running his hand like this, um, this older gnome character uh, with uh, patches of, of, of white, kind of gray hair, uh, this big kind of bush of a, of a white beard. Uh, it's well trimmed up here, and then it kind of comes to a point in the bottom. Uh, it's very, very large uh, spectacles with like a number of smaller uh, and even smaller lenses in the front of it. Um, he's currently wearing what looks to be a, a leather apron and sleeves that are rolled up, and one of his hands is currently now like bleeding on the edge, and he's like, <laughs> Tell me sorry about that. I come forward, come forward. She said you're the, the friends of uh, my my last there. Uh, how you doing? What's your names? Oh. Uh, morning. We're uh, we're the Mighty Nine. We had the pleasure of meeting your daughter uh, yesterday. <clears throat> she showed us a great time last night. Oh, did you, dear? That's so nice. You're making friends. But it's like, Dad, please stop it. You're. Look, they just want to come by. They had some questions, I think. Do what you're gonna do, please. We can get going. Well, if you want to, are we? How close are we to to those to those uh, to the other house the at this point? To the boys? Probably not within a thousand feet. Uh, uh, the boys are. She mentioned earlier there are a few blocks down, or a few uh, buildings oh, down, yeah. and then up from from where you are. Say, so, well, at the very least, let me introduce myself. I'm Master Maker Cliff Tinkertop. Cliff <laughs> <laughs> or Cliff? Cliff. Cliff. I was excited to see what sort of stuff. Creator that and experimenter of all things metallic and clicking. <laughs> Your shop is beautiful. Thank you so sense. much. We appreciate that. <laughs> so yeah, what you, what, what can I do for you? Any little toys that Kiri would like. Uh, what what's uh, Kiri's our little daughter has Kiri a bird. Kiri is right here. And the over and you can you know, Yasha's still <laughs> kind of behind. Uh, can you, that's a mighty big bird. She's a little girl. She can only sword. Looks up to him. She's a mighty big bird. Oh. Oh. He's like, 
That's a nice trick on that one. She's I like really that. Talented. Uh, mm. Do you like? And he pulls this like small uh, contraption. It's actually a miniature version of what you saw those large bolt throwers that were being constructed up front, where it has this kind of bowed art and there's a, a small what looks like a, a blunted stick in it. And he goes, "All you do." Is pull back on this trigger, bing, and fires off, narrowly missing the side of Bo's head. Oh. Hit something, and you hear glass <laughs> shatter in the background. He goes, "Oh, maybe not that one." <laughs> <laughs> Put some back. <laughs> and hands something over to Kiri, who kind of accepts it. <laughs> <laughs> there's a moment where things are just awkward, and there's a tension, and you're about to go for it. Before it kind of <laughs> opens up. And from the inside, you see these, this tiny metallic bird that's wings kind of flap up and down, and a music box begins to play. And Kiri, looking at this, begins mimicking exactly the sound of the, of the music box. It begins like it's it's almost one step or uh, one beat behind it until it synchronizes, and she's mimicking at such an incredibly fast pace behind it that they're almost in unison, until eventually it slows down and comes to a stop. And Kiri looks back to you. You like it? How, 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 how much is that? Oh, that one, uh, it's a beautiful piece. I'll be happy to let it go for about uh, three gold pieces. Three gold pieces. I think that's worth it, Kiri. Yes, yes. Okay, okay, three gold pieces. There's a whole smattering of cool contraptions now that you're kind of looking at the back, too. Some that look like, uh, it could be armaments, almost. Some that look like they're they're the insides of larger machine pieces. What's the thing you're most proud of? Oh, uh, uh, um, proud of now? I have one thing I'm working on. If you want to see it. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Okay, okay, okay. Now, I mean, hoping that they'd uh, pay attention to this since you know the whole war is going on. I think it'd be quite useful. I've kind of lost some. Uh, uh, good favor with uh, folks in power, but um, I hope maybe this will turn my fortune around. <laughs> and he goes around and goes off the shelf and pulls this down. And what looks to be, um, it looks like a like a, a, a bow of some kind, a small bow that's affixed to this large device. It looks like a crossbow, but it's got a series of like a heavy crank on one side, and it has what looks to be like all these extra grooves put in where it's easy to assemble a bolt in there. Um, the actual uh, shaft of it is made of this like polished, treated wood with like metal casing where the grip is. Um, it's it's like a like a half clockwork gear based crank hand crossbow. Repeating crossbow. It's maybe. repeating crossbow. How does it work? <laughs> right. Well, you you load the bolt into here, and you crank it back real fast, and I, and it's like as he cranks it, it's like probably have to oil this. <laughs> crank it, then. You just release, and this one goes just like just parting Caleb's hair into the roof above. How oh. many gold is that toy? Uh, well, this one, uh, you see, I had a friend of mine uh, go ahead and help prepare it with some magical enchantment. Oh. So uh, this one. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was that? I don't know, it sounded like a tower. Like a manatee was at the table. I don't know. <laughs> I call this one the Tinker Top Bolt Blaster 1000. Wow. <laughs> what happened to the other 900? Certainly nice. happy to. How much yep. is it? Uh, uh, this one runs just over 2,000 gold. Wow, that is a lot of well, gold. Well, it's my prototype, so if I'm going to let it go. Uh, Am I allowed to rob him? No. No. This is like. Dad, they don't want it. It's fine. No one wants all your bullshit. Please. No, it's it's true. Cool. It's true. It's, it actually is quite impressive. It's really expensive. You wouldn't say that if you'd known what some of his other things have done. And he kind of like gets quiet for a second and recoils, like kind of quietly hurt and goes, it, it's, it comes with the job sometimes. Not everything works out like you hope. You said you'd lost some uh, favor with people in power. I, I don't mean to pry, but would you mind sharing what happened? Uh, and Rissa's like, uh, it's, you don't have to answer him. We can go find the boys. Like, it's all right, it's all right. Make a persuasion check. Come on, yeah. Come on, Come on. Oh, Come on. yeah, that's a 20. 20? You see kind of, kind of his, his trepidation there, and he goes, um, yeah, you, you, 
You look like you've got an, an honest face, so, um... I was working on a job here for the wardens, um, of the, uh, the gear hole prison down below. Um, I was helping them and came up with, a, at their request, what would be a clockwork warden. Something that could help keep watch over some of the more dangerous and uh, difficult inmates of the prison below. Um, and I, and I did it. I was very proud of it. And on its, uh, its first foray, it, uh, had some vaults that I didn't see coming, and, uh, uh, we couldn't control it. And it began to just destroy whatever was in its way. You are speaking of an automaton? Uh, more or less. Um... Did it kill people? What a word. They tell me. Uh, they keep it down there still. They, they, they've, they've sealed it off, and it's just been there for the better part of about two years. And uh, every now and then, they like to remind me. I didn't mean anything bad by it. Uh, I was just doing my job, and I thought I was very proud of my work. I, I didn't see the problems there, and I, I didn't. I was just trying to help. How do they remind you? They come by and tell me. Are there punishments levied against you? Thankfully, not many. Um, I'm still paying off my fine. Um, they were going to try and destroy the thing, but uh, unfortunately they've had to allocate their attention to many places, and now with the war coming, I don't know if they'll ever get to it, but uh, uh, as long as it's down there, it's just a black spot on my my name and her name. And Risa goes like, ah, oh, Dad, just please stop it. destroy it. Or get it back for you. And then you could give us the crossbow. I, I don't want to send any more people to their death at the very least. We're I don't even know. Strong. Yeah, we're kind of uh, death adverse. Plus, you know, we would love to pay for your crossbow, but we're currently light. Fuck, we're broke. All of our money was stolen. Last night. All of their money was stolen. I was sober. Good for you. Thank you. A learned lesson for the rest of you. It was okay. a choice, you know? Everybody else was like, let's get drunk. And I was like, that is really bad. And. I should probably stay so. I'm very proud of you. Thank you. Um, that, uh, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's very kind of folks that just wander in here not but a few moments ago. Uh, yeah, no. w what would you do if, if you had the thing back? Or, or... Oh, I don't want it back. I just want it gone. I want it destroyed. I want it taken care of and buried. I don't want to touch it or. Wait, who, who wandered in here before? You. Yeah, us. Yeah, you were just oh. talking about us. Are you afraid? You're we'll, still drunk, aren't you? Sorry. Are you afraid this clockwork warden could be used for <laughs> malign purposes? I don't think it could be used for anything but just killing what's in front of it right now. So they have it penned in, but it is out of their control? Uh, from what I know, you'd have to go ask the warden helm, but I, I don't go down their places. I mean, if I can't expect you to do something like that, it's very sweet of you to offer. No, it's tit for tat. I mean, in this case, we're short on coin, and you make mighty fine objects. Seems to have got the eye of most of our group. I mean, uh, in a theoretical space, which is where I live most of my days, <laughs> um, if you were to, to put this blight to rest, um, I'd, I'd be happy to give this to you free of charge, and my thanks. We will take it under consideration. And just while we're, you know, talking, you wouldn't happen to know of any criminal undergrounds, <laughs> thieves' guilds, pickpocketers, people of the night? I, I don't, I don't. Rumors of shadows? I don't delve in those places, I'm sorry. Vampires, zombies. Well, let's. Mm. I don't know what's going on. What are you. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. Arms. Calm down, calm down. Uh, Cliff, you also have Cliff. simple arms? Yeah, Cliff, Cliff. Oh, I, well, I said uh, Cliff. <laughs> it's, it's, I, I deal with more detailed arms. If you're looking for simple, you're probably going to go to the Steelbringers Forge. Um, and Risa goes, that's where the boys will probably be. That's where they work. That's where the boys anyway. will probably be. Okay, okay. The anvil. Right. Uh, Clef, you know, you seem to have a fine eye and talent for mechanical devices. Well, thank you, thank do, you very much. Do you ever have any need of uh, alchemical 
combinations with your with your mechanical devices. Well, I'm always looking for fine oils. Clockwork tends to need to be lubricated. I think I have a little oil. If you if you need it, as a sign of good faith. Oh. Did. Did. Didn't we get oil at some point? <laughs> I don't think so. I threw mine in a troll. Great. Oh wait, no, I have, I ho I have holy water. That is <laughs> not <laughs> the same thing. That's all right. Don't worry about it. That's okay. If you come across some oil, I could use it. All right. Risa, I like your friends. She's like, thank you, Dad. You raised her good. She's been taking good care of us. Have you found work yet? No, Dad, I'm working on it. Ooh, awkward. She's working for us. Yep. Right, I am working for them. At the moment. Good, good. Proud of you. Subcontractor work isn't too bad of a living. No, no, that's still a living. That's some more than some folks in the Empire can we say, need so. her social security number for a 1099, by the way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe I believe she's incorporated. She's incorporated. So any good gnome is incorporated. I mean, that's a cultural thing. Fucking Hopper Duke bureaucracy. Thirteenth birthday, they get their S corp set up. It's great. <laughs> oh. Okay, okay, okay. Cliff, we appreciate your time. We are we're gonna venture out. Oh, of we'll course, I expect soon. nothing. I really appreciate you being so kind and. Uh, good luck. Our Take compliments on your work. It was truly spectacular. Take care of my Rasanya. She's like, ooh, Rasanya! <gasps> there it is. Rasanya. That was what I was hoping for. That was what I was hoping Rasanya. for, and it happened. Rasanya. You can see her like shiver the door and then just run out. <laughs> good boy. Take care. <laughs> I can. Something shoots up. Oh. Damn it. <laughs> As you all leave, exit out, and she's out there kind of fuming outside. He's adorable. As He's like something. He's certainly something. As uh, we leave, I grab the bolt that he shot into the wall over Caleb's head. Dink. Okay. You pocketed a bolt. Pocket a bolt. Pocket a bolt. Pocket a bolt. Pocket a bolt. bolt. <laughs> so, uh, lasagna, should we uh, try and find our way over to the. <clears throat> Steelbringer's Forge? Yeah. Well, Right, yeah. right, come on, I'll lead you over to where the boys are. You're gonna you rough them up the again? Them They're only a couple they... blocks away. Right, right, just right in the corner. Come on, come on, I'll show should you. They, should oh, they, they try casting it again? Yes. Oh, uh, wait a yes. minute. Yes. Wait, wait. Not yet. As we walk over there, I say, hey, Risa. Hi. You got a good dad. He really loves you. I know, he's just, um, he's difficult at times and, you know, it's hard to scrape under a family name when it's been through the ringer. Well, sometimes family names aren't all that they're cracked up to be. <laughs> she kind of gives you a look over. I agree. <laughs> and what's more important is that he really cares for you. <clears throat> Don't take that for granted, all right? And I kind of slap her on the back and keep <laughs> walking. <laughs> yeah, and the fact that he's, you know, you know him is really cool too. Anyway. <laughs> wow, so many daddy issues. I was just like, <laughs> me and Jester hold hands and we skip off. <laughs> you guys are led down past a few buildings and then around the corner and you can see um, while most of the uh, like the heavy metal works is done down below on the ground floor of the base of the mountain, uh, the more refined metal works are done up here on the shelf. Uh, and as you approach, you can already see the, uh, the, um, the Steelbringer's Forge which has a number of shields and swords on display, armor bits, and you can see simple tools uh, are crafted here. And as you step, already looking into the main chamber door, which is open, because it's just so hot in there, they have to keep a breeze going through. There are uh, two forges going at any given point in time, and there are two anvils set up. And you see a few gnomes at work, and indeed you do see both Fitz and Ashton are both working as assistants. They're not actually like, Banging the hammer, but they're both helping, like move things and you know, crouching into the water, and then uh, helping gather materials and holding the metal and, and rotating it on the anvil as their bosses are hammering down. Um, they don't seem to notice your arrival. I use thaumaturgy to make it sound like whispers of infernal all around them. Ping, ping. Hold back, boys. <laughs> but you, you see, uh, there's 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 uh, one uh, one male gnome and one female dwarf that are both sitting there, like grabbing their nearby warhammers. Look around, they look over and see the shadows in the corner. 
What beast brings their way into our workplace? Name yourself! Oh, hi! <laughs> hi. <laughs> they look at each other. <laughs> The, the male gnome, uh, the, the, the dwarf female just goes, ping, goes back to work. You see the two assistants look over and go, <laughs> and just like put their heads down and keep just focused on their work. The, the gnome says, take a break. Hi, can we help you? <laughs> We're here to talk to those two. What did you do? What did you do? And he like slaps with like, with a, with a cloth. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, ah, I can't take it! Was... What do they boys do? what do they do? They might have been party to a crime, we don't know. We are investigators. <sighs> you can see across the way, Ashton's like, oh, and uh, the, the dwarf goes, well then, best go talk to them. Gives them a little kick to the side, and they both kind of take their hammers down, they t- take the metal off and kind of you know, put it back in the forge to heat, and they both kind of rest and cross their arms and just watch. The two boys kind of look at each other and sheepishly step forward. Hi, hi miss, uh, what can we do? What you asking about? Yeah, what can we do? Um, we're talking here, or are we gonna take them outside? Hmm. Rissa goes, I don't know. Um, kind of like to do it in, in a place of business. That way we can keep it above the board, you know? Indeed, I'm sure their employers are not fond of uh, thieves in their midst. I look uh, back at the boys and I say, sit the fuck down. <laughs> they both like grab nearby stools and, <laughs> and sit down. Here's the deal. This guy's super fucking charming. He's gonna talk to you first. <laughs> you don't want to talk to me. She's not charming at yeah. all. Deal. 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 <laughs> My man afford a zip. I leave my hands in the bed and say, I suggest Ooh. you help this one find the things that we are looking for. And I cast suggest. Okay, uh, what's the DC on that? Ah, uh, that is 16. 16? Wisdom. Wisdom. On one of them? Or one of them, them, yeah. I'm gonna, which one, Ashen or Fitz? Fitz. All right. Yeah, Fitz did seem like a prick. Like the, I like that it was like not even yeah. a question. Yes, <laughs> Fitz. Fitz. Fitz was like a beater. Fitz kind of looks at you and goes like, and looks right to Ford, the spell seemingly taking effect. And I kind of crack my knuckles, intimidate him a bit from behind. Fitz, I understand that you, uh, might have been felt a little slighted by last night's encounter. Oh, oh, no, you know, I'm just, uh... So you could talk. <laughs> what I want to know is, when you came back into the bar last night, did you see fit to rummage your way through some good, hard-working people's coin purses? His eyes go wide. No, no, not at all. No, I went, I, went, I, I earned my money. How about your friend Ashton over there? Ashton looks back. No, um, no, sir. Uh, we were just looking, we were just joshing, we were just playing with Rissa, that was all. I pull out my staff. Do a cool little flourish. See, now, now we're in a dangerous territory because once that staff comes out, she's got to hit something with it, and it's not going to be me. Listen, Fitz, the best thing you can do here is rack your brain real hard and think, have you ever seen anyone around that establishment that might take advantage of some people enjoying some good imbibements? Um. Oh, Fitz, tick tock, tick tock. I, I, I don't know, um, for, for, uh, maybe, um. Take us a few steps forward. Oh no. Make an intimidation check. <laughs> oh, Jesus. No. This is really my strongest. I know it's I think you both make one because you're doing it together. Okay. Together? Okay. Oh, that's not bad. 13? Yeah. Uh, 16. All right. They both kind of look at each other and, like. Um. I mean, there, there, there are probably some some people who could have taken things. I I don't know. They're, you look at the shady folk, and they're all the time. But I, I, I we we don't we don't have your money. I swear I didn't do anything. <laughs> Making kids cry. It's amazing. <laughs> Ash is like, so come on, to get it together, and like kicks him. Like, we I'm being we we're being completely honest. Um, I we we saw nothing. We took nothing. We were just we were just getting our getting our rocks off, uh, uh, freaking people out, and then we went back and got some drinks. And don't know anyone else that has made a habit of doing this regularly, though. Mm-hmm. Not personally, no. Most of them just end up in the, in the gear hole. Um, Should I pour this vial of acid on them? I think, I think <laughs> you, you might get it ready. Not. I feel like we're just not getting anywhere here. Do you know where Old Blemmy is from? Are they both kind of looking at each other like? 
Um, well, he originally he used to be uh, an ice sailor up north by Ice Haven, but he, he retired like ten years ago. Like, I don't know right now. <laughs> <laughs> So it's, it's By the way, ice sailor sounds like the coolest yes. job. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, that's, uh, that ice sailor would be a person that, that forges the the frozen depths up north. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's you know kind of the thing people you see on uh, Deadliest Catch. Sure. Catch it's, it's that kind of job. It's uh, mixed with ice road truckers. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Fitz, I'm I'm gonna talk to my colleague here. If you move. Bo's going to take your head off. Don't move. I think we got him right where we want him. Just fucking act like you don't like what I'm saying. Just look agitated. Okay. Look more agitated right now. More grimace. Give me nostrils. Nasal labial fold. Really work it. There it goes. Okay. All right. I I talked to her, Fitz. Listen. She will stay her staff if in the next 24 hours you work your ass off and you find out who took our money. Okay, okay. God, it's just, God, my stuff is just vibrating. Easy, Bo, remember what you said. I don't know about this board. This is not gonna go well for you unless you can produce some results. Looks to Ash, Ash will take, okay, no, we'll, we'll, have, we'll ask around, we'll, we'll, we'll do it, uh, that's, that's okay with the bosses, when, uh, like. You can go ahead and look when you're done with the forge. When the whistles blow, how about it? Ah, but Fitz, I suggested you do everything in your power to help my friend Ford, and for the next eight hours, that is what you will do. I'm going to get fired. Uh, Fitz is like, I, I, I have to work, and it's, a, it's my livelihood. Well, if you gotta work, you got even less time. Better be motivated. Mm-hmm. And you know, in this case, I would weigh between your livelihood and your life. Can't have one without the other. Oh no, you guys, you guys. <laughs> what? What's wrong? They're both are, the spirits are pretty crushed right now, and they're both I'm like. I'm going to get fired. You feel bad? I do. Uh, Hold on. How much do these young men make in a day here? Uh, they both kind of look at each other. Oh, on a good day, um, we give them about uh, a gold for a day's work. Yeah. I want this one particularly working now. So why don't we stake their salary for the day? We take care of that, double it even. We need these two. We pay for the loss of their work today. They kind of nod, the uh, the gnome steps forward, takes the coin, if you you present it. We don't have any. Oh, God, (laughs) guys. All right, so it's four gold, because it's two of them for, you know, two gold. Okay, so you boys go get your work done here. We'll find some replacements, and you hope they aren't better than you are. And the boy's like, "Yes, yes, sir, yes, sir." Um, right. Can we crack my staff on the floor, and I said, "Can fucking move oh, it." They get up and they grab their stuff, and then just dart out into the street. Excellent. Did you for- I shoot them down while they run? <laughs> Not yet. No. Not yet. The two forge workers. No. No. The- <laughs> <laughs> There's a pause. Like the the two. Uh, Workers at the forge kind of look at each other and look at you guys and go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna lie; those boys are gonna be pissing in their pants for a week after that. That's, that was enjoyable. Yeah, might scare them straight. Uh, I hope so. They need it. They're a couple of piss ants. Anyway, we've got to go find some replacements. But thank you for your helping out with the transition, at least. Our we, we, we hate to bother you, also, but we did actually get robbed. And if you have any idea where we should start looking to <laughs> actually. Everyone. <laughs> Everyone. They both kind of look at each other and be like, um, maybe. Mm, that's down at the assembly yard. There's a bunch of weird folks that wander down there. A bunch I of like the. Weird folks. The, uh, in lifelong industrial hammer workers. Not a lot of craft and skill. Mine gets a bit addled. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. Of course, of course. <clears throat> anyway, we've got to go get back to work. We take our leave. All right, you guys wander outside. On the way out, can I just ask that gentleman, do you, do you make any of those... Uh, Hangers. Hangers? Those, those things that we've seen around here? Scissors? <laughs> the, 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 the pistols. Do you make those here? Oh, no, 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 we don't specialize in firearms. Those are all relegated by the Empire. Those are designed down in the assembly yard. Oh, thank you. 
Good day. Or that would be the. Um, the iron lot is where that would be made. The iron lot. Yeah, did, when we were in there, the yeah. shields and swords, they looked fairly standard, or were there some that were like, holy shit? No, they seem pretty standard. And well made. Um, looks like, uh, you know, a lot of places Quality like this are in the process of uh, developing weaponry, not just for home use, but probably Outfit setting it out for the field. Yeah. Risa, how far are we from this uh, assembly yard? She goes, ah, oh, the assembly yard is that's down in the bottom half of the city, so it's about, uh, say, about an hour, hour and a half walk. And just out of curiosity, the Silver Falls, the residential area, how far is that? Oh, that's that way, about uh, 25 minutes to get to the actual falls themselves, and all the, the see the, all the little towers over there, those are where all the homes are assembled in that place. Old Blemmy's over in the Silver Falls, that residential area, do we want to go there? Or? The list of suspects is as follows. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> the pianist. Blemmy, Rissa, the girl. The little girl that the was asking girl. for money. Yeah, Fitz and Ashton, we've eliminated as possible suspects. Fitz, Fitz and Ashton, really, really, I mean, I don't come, think they're, they're really don't think they lame. Yeah. The pianist. Why? Because you did locate object within his. You're right, that's true, we did do that. Rissa, because she was in zone of truth. Yep. Yeah. That leaves our suspects, Blemmy. And the girl. Well, we have no leads on the girl, correct? But no Blimey. one saw her, knows her name. Blimey might know the girl. I saw her. You did. But I did not ask her name. <laughs> but she has your copper pieces. <laughs> I gave her silver. You did. Yeah, one. You Two. did. Could That's you right. find those specific silver pieces? Or, or the money she stole from us. <laughs> do you bite your silver pieces before you put them in your coin purse? Yeah, did you lick it? But I do draw dicks on a lot of my money, but I don't think, <laughs> I little, don't think I did tiny, it to those like, ones. Little tiny dicks? Well, I have really good paint, you know, so it's like. So we go find Blemmy. Silver Falls. Yeah. Silver Falls. That's the residential, That's the residential area. residential area. 25 minutes away. Like the Finger Towers asking. apartment. We can keep off. asking okay. if anyone, has anyone, has anyone had anything purchased? That was a lot of money. With dicks on it. <laughs> that too. No, wait, because no, they didn't steal my money. Yeah, there was a way to I ask have about a whole large. I pouch full of money, you guys. If you could ask about large pouch purchases, pouch. that would be a good pouch. idea. But. <laughs> Silver Falls? Let's Silver Falls! Silver Falls. Oh. Silver Falls. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, Rissa guiding you guys back. You managed to make your way outside of the main idol shelf uh, area and mm -hmm. in towards the cluster of the Silver Falls. And as you approach, you can see the beautiful, uh, very wide waterfall that cascades down about a thousand feet uh, across the mountainside until eventually it falls into this large lake where you can see columns of steam are rising up. You see, the closer you get, you begin to realize that there is an element of this lake, this waterfall, and uh, some sort of a steam engine type mechanism built into the surrounding rock that they use to, to fuel probably the furnaces and elements of the technology within the city. Um, and as you begin to hit the residential area, you can see these large, like somewhat crooked looking uh, towers that themselves are maybe what would be the equivalent of uh, 1,500 to 1,000 square foot apartments, but stacked four or five on top of each other with spiraling stairs on the outside to go to each level. Um, and there aren't a lot of folks currently at home other than you know, stay-at-home dads or moms that are watching children, um, some folks that are putting out you know, laundry on lines that are connecting between multiple towers and just kind of dangling up two or three stories above the street. Um, but they're all made of you know, dark irons and you know, blacker metals, uh, so it gives the district this very kind of weirdly, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, a, a, a whimsical, Industrial Revolution feel. It's 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 a unique mixture, uh, kind of, or you know, a hint a hint of Howl's Moving Castle mm -hmm. in places. Yeah. Um, but there's also that spray of the waterfall hitting the lake behind, which gives kind of this occasionally this this kind of light misting of water through the air, and you can see faint bits of rainbow that mm -hmm. come through where the mist hits the sunlight as it kind of uh, makes its way across the waterfall spray. And you said the waterfall goes up a thousand feet, mm -hmm. and the apartments don't go as high as that. No, 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 not at all. So if I got kind of in the middle of the area and cast locate object, it would do a really big radius. It would reach at least the top of the buildings. Uh oh yeah, very much so. Let's go. Okay. Okay. So as you make your way through, you're not entirely sure where 
old Blemmy is. Yep. Um, but you make your way kind of towards where the middle Rissa says of the district is. Keeping an eye out for old craggly sailor types. Sure. Nice. Make yeah. a perception check. Oh, me? Yep. Should I cast Loki the object while we're walking around? Only if you. Can you. Would, would, can, will you be able to cast it again? Okay. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm gonna, if I use a bomb, my spells today as like this kind of thing. Why did you? It's a oh. second level spell. Mm-hmm. So, do, you want, do you want to cast it again or not? I can. Just while we walk, okay, stroll through yeah. the town? Through the, through the residential. Through the residential. Sure. Your call, man. I guess. I mean. The what are you searching for? The, the drinking oh. coins, right? Yeah, okay. the tokens. The tokens? I think that's the best way to go. Cast bell. Okay, so you go ahead and cast look at object. You concentrate and focus, kind of extending your consciousness, focusing on one of these wooden tokens, the one that was won by one of the members of your party. You get a blip. Behind you. Not quite in the district, but right where the idlework shelf transitions into the residential area on the idlework shelf, you get I turn around and start running towards it. What? You guys follow me. Follow me. Yeah. Yeah. She's a bloodhound. All right. Kind of throwing up on the <laughs> You guys dart yeah. after Jester, kind of making your way down the road, <laughs> running. <laughs> <laughs> you're closing the distance. Closing the distance. Closing the distance. You weave through a couple buildings. You're out of the dis- you're out of the residential part of the district again. And you're back into the idle shelf, but on the, the the very very back end of it, there's warehouses and there's small buildings, and eventually you come to the destination, and it looks like uh, it's a it's a small building. Uh, there's a sign out front that just says butcher, and it's boarded up. <gasps> yeah, that motherfucker there's had leather apron with shitty ass ooh, sleeves. Ooh, he was like third guy. Yeah. Was it Blemmy? No, it was, no, it was, it was the, that, like, the guy with the nasty dude. fucking beard. Yep. They all had nasty beards. Yeah. Duncan, yeah. Duncan, 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 there was a, there was a butcher. Duncan, it was Duncan, I called Duncan, it out Duncan. that was his name, right? Not, the guy that Vulcan? you drink across. We no. should probably keep our voices down <gasps> in the street. It was Duncan the nerdy guy. No, no. The first guy was Duncan. The nerdy guy. Okay. Vulcan was the next oh, guy. Vulcan was let's the guy that fought Caleb. Okay, let's go. Should we just go in? No, no. no. Who's going to guard the back? The I'm back? Oh, we're going to circle around? Fuck yeah. We're, yeah. yeah. If she's getting a beacon. Yeah. You see uh, Kiri pulls out a knife and goes, I can send a message. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, Kiri, this is where we're stealthy, all right? Knife goes away. Do we want to send Shh. not nice. or a cat in? How, is there a roof? To this thing? There is a roof, yeah. Two story uh, closer? Yeah. Uh, it's one story, it's not a huge building. It's it's maybe maybe uh, three rooms. I parkour on the roof? No. Okay, make Wait, an acrobat. Can we surround it first? Jesus! She's oh, already she, out. She, she, she hops up there and I run around the back. Yeah, we're okay. I would just stay in the front. <laughs> 25. All right, you guys surround it. Are there any um, chimneys, soft spots in the floor, uh, skylights? Uh, there, there isn't a skylight per se, but you do Spider-Man. see there is what looks to be like an, uh, an exhaust, uh, like a little smokestack. That's about maybe three feet wide or so, Come on, two and a half me. feet wide. I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna peek Chris in. Kringle. Yeah. Can I see down? Yeah, make a perception check. Is it on? Mm-hmm. I mean, you know by now. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Mm, 14. 14. Glancing inside, it's dark, except for you can see the little beams of light, sunlight that are coming through the slats of wood on the roof. Goggles. Uh, glancing inside, looking through, uh, you can see four figures in there that are currently kind of just not moving, and they're all kind of clustered together in the far corner. What do they look like? They look gnome in size. Okay. Do they, is there a move? They're just huddled together, you they're said? Huddled together, and they're not moving. I will take out my wire. You kind of look, and they're starting to, to look around, like they they might have heard a noise. A whisper to Bo, and when using and message, like, what do you see? You can reply to this message. Four individuals huddled around. They're either the assholes or hostages. It's hard to say. Or tango. Shall we all go in at the same time? Oh, you can't hear me, and no. we're not messaging together. No, no. I'm just talking to myself. Um. Hi. Hey. Hi. I'm gonna. You don't know what you're doing. Is there, a, is there a door or a window on the back at all, or is it just like? No, there's a door in the front and a door at the back. The door in the front is, uh, it's like a, two, a sectional door. There's a top and a bottom. Looks like it can be opened separately to like sell out or uh, once to, to, to bring and sell meat over that side. Mm-hmm. The back is just a general door. It looks to almost like a storage space or a back entry to it. Outstanding. 
No open windows. Should we draw them out? But there are there are windows, but they're boarded oh, over. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. Hell yeah. of us should go in. We're just gonna bust in. What if they have traps and bombs? I'm gonna very gingerly this lean over the edge of the roof where Ford is, and I'm gonna say, on the boom. Okay. And I'm gonna go back over to the chimney very gingerly, pull out one of the firecracker, one of the bottle rockets, just light it from the tinderbox, and drop it in. Awesome. <laughs> Can, is the chimney wide enough for me to fit in? Uh, you can try. Santa Claus style. You can try. Yeah. Maybe like that. You can certainly try. There was a back door too. Yeah. Front door. He's at the back door. And you're at the front. It goes off. The inside is a flash of light. You hear screams. You guys all burst inside as you kind of break through the doors. Wood splinters on the inside. Light breaks in, and in the corner you can see what looks to be. Four gnomish children, two of them teenage, two of them younger, all scared out of their minds. The teenagers are trying to protect the two younger ones, and you can see what looks to be a pile of gold around them on the ground. And they're just like, <sighs> you the children. Easy, the easy, girl. easy, easy. We're not going to hurt you. I will kill them. No, 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 no. It's fine. You're not in any danger. You see, uh, there is uh, a gnome girl, the equivalent of like 17 or so, with very like brown curled hair. It's this uncontrolled mass, a little dirty on the cheek. And you see uh, a younger boy with short red hair uh, as the other protector of the two. Their clothes are pretty dirty. Um, and then there's the younger girl that you saw wandering through the tavern, um, who's, who's on the ground clutching what looks to be a, like, a, like a stuffed bear. And you see. And you see a, a, a young a boy. It's a little older than her, about nine, you would say equivalent, uh, with very long brown hair that's kind of just going to the shoulders, just like. And they all just look scared. That detective agency, agency always yeah. gets their man. <laughs> <laughs> always gets their man. Yeah. It's all right. Hey, I know you. I saw you. Right. I gave you some money. <coughs> She's not talking. Stole from <laughs> our. Friends, not you went, you went down cool. the chimney. <coughs> not in character. Oh, is that a wrong button? Keep going. <laughs> I totally thought you were just doing the like, way down the chimney. Like, yeah, as I cough my way down the chimney, I'm coming. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you look up and she kind of <laughs> <laughs> comes up, <laughs> big old like plume of soot. Yeah, it's just covered. I'm a little and late and I look at the girl and I say, "It was you." Oh, no, 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 <laughs> you can see the, uh, the 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 older girls. Look, we don't mean nothing. We're just trying to get by, okay? We didn't realize how much you had on you, and to be honest, it was both exciting and scary. Just don't hurt anyone, please. I'm not gonna hurt you. Just oh, give it all back. Past. Give it back. Take it. No parents at all. They all kind of look sad for a moment, say, not for a little while. How much have you hoarded up here? Just us or more? Um, we've scrambled coins here and there over time, you know, keep on by. Most everyone here only keeps a few coins in their pockets. Hence really? our surprise when this came about and the, uh, the younger boy goes like, yeah, we don't, uh, you don't expect this kind of a payload. <laughs> How old are you? The um, the older girl goes. Oh. I'm Gail. I'm about seventeen. And Gail. The the older boy goes. I'm Austin. The little boy with the longer curly hair goes. I'm Jude. And uh, the older girl point, points to the little girl and goes, that's, that's Layla. Mm. You said you haven't had your parents around for a while now. What happened to them? I'm going to look at each other, and the, the older boy steps forward and goes, well, uh, uh, they got arrested. For doing what? Got arrested for idol worship, false worship. <gasps> Here, in Humperdoo. What god were they worshipping? Was it the Traveler? No, Changebringer. A Changebringer? 
Vondra. It's been in the family for a long time. They, uh, every six months, the, um, uh, the tithe collectors come through and they noticed they had forgotten to put away their idol worship and now they locked him up. And they've been in the gear hole ever since. Tithe collectors. And you know about this. Those of you who have been in the Empire, uh, part of living in the Empire is about every six months or so, there's a tax man, a tithe collector that goes through, usually with a couple crowns guard. You recognize him by black cloak with gold trim, usually dark clothing, and they go room, uh, building to building, business to business, inspect ledgers, um, ask about their business, look at the means of which they're living, and then make an estimation of what they owe. They then collect the money and then move on their way. But it's also, and you know this, especially in your in your studies, this is also used as a means of inspecting for any illegal activity, uh, anything that goes against the crown, and uh, often a lot of people get arrested for that. You all brothers and sisters? Aye, uh, we are. And your parents' names? Gilda and Wallace Schuster, we're Schusters. How long have you been pickpocketing then? Only about three months. Mostly success at this point. So far, so good. People don't seem to pay much attention to the younger kids. No, well, and this is now. good. This is a very, very valuable lesson here. If you ever come across a purse like this again, you just take a tiny bit of it and then leave the rest. We just grab it and run. We didn't know how much was here till we got back. Well, then you just bring it back immediately with a small, obviously, you take Right, right, 5%. no, I understand, I understand. Gail says, we understand, sir, We're, uh, we've learned our lesson. And here, look, because you were so good at your job, keep this, and I hand him 20 gold. Oh. Look, I appreciate good work when I see it, no, all right? No, no, you got absolutely. our shit, that was pretty damn good. Hey, thank you. Gail, you've been taking care of your younger siblings this whole time? I've been trying best we can. We, uh, you know, parents were just butchers, so we had some food to keep us going for a while, but when stuff got thin and begging wasn't working out, we, you know, did what was necessary, and I'll do what it takes to make sure my siblings stay healthy. You've been held up here, or are you on the move? No, we've held up here. This is, this is where we grew up. How long before the tithe man comes back? Any time now, really. It's been six months, but, I mean, we ain't much of a business at this time. Is there anywhere they take kids and get separated from their parents, or did they just not care? I hear stories. They round them up and throw them to Rex and Trim and orphanages, and we don't want to go there. So you're just avoiding them? Gilda and Wallace. Gilda and Wallace. Let me ask you, if we were to somehow get your parents out of Gearhold Prison, would you stay here? How would you intend on getting my parents out of the prison? I'm the one asking questions here. I mean, uh, legally, we'd probably stay here and reopen the shop, you know? You don't seem to be taking my meaning. If we were to reunite you with your folks, would you get out of town right quick? If you were, if it were by means where people would come looking for us, we would definitely be heading somewhere other than here. Give us a moment, will you? All right. How well done? How soft are you getting? <laughs> well, it's very clear. We have Kiri already. We take these four children with us mm -hmm. and we keep going. Yeah. And we start, we start a children's a band. Yeah. Yes. And the then, then you know, yes. <laughs> the yes. 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 we can teach them the dances that we have been learning <laughs> and yes. working on. Plus that little yeah. smiling yeah. guy. Very good. If I've yeah. learned yeah. anything, you don't work with yeah. animals or children, and we're rapidly getting better. Hey, man, attach them all by chains to your armor, and you guys are the new Dread Emperor. Oh. I mean. Oh. <laughs> oh, no, but serious. <laughs> Listen, they've obviously done a fair job of taking care of themselves. We could toss them some coin and just wish them well, well or... Yeah. I threw a little, it's no problem with that. Oh, it was a good work. Like their parents well, out of if, jail. We're, if we're serious about returning Clef with his... Uh, yeah, we're going to be down there anyway. Might as well see if we can get a little extra friend or two out. Well, let's make no promises, but uh, again, let's, let's not... not no promises, but man, if we have an opportunity to reunite these kids with their parents, that's 
That's important. It's a pretty special deed, don't you think? So soft. Can I ask a a shitty question? Oh, please. If we take the time right now to break their parents out and get that automaton, are we going to lose time on the thing for the gentleman? Is the thing? Yes, we are. Man, I entirely forget. But well, we still have weeks little... left, don't we? But it's still There's another a lot of travel. three or four days. You have a means of contacting the gentleman. You could ask for a three-day extension. I tend to find these sorts of jobs, asking for a three-day extension does not go well. You're given the time, you do the job, you finish it, you don't ask questions, you don't ask for special. Haven't you been working for the circus for two years? That's what I'm talking about. Well, we've done other. When you're in a circus, sometimes you get paid to do gigs. Things have happened. Okay. Wait, I've, run a, I've run a couple things in my time. I mean, not inside run, check. but. Inside check. Inside check. I think it's do I believe him? Yes. Right? Do, do I, I believe, believe him? him? But inside yeah. check has become such a thing. I'm into it. Frustratingly <laughs> yeah. so, yes. But the DM, <laughs> the DM, the DM hates it. it. Sorry. Yeah, the DM. I find it amusing. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Do I Go think ahead. he's lying? <laughs> I'm not, I, we're a circus. Of course we've robbed people. My <laughs> God, we have robbed, swindled, we've been robbed, we've gone back and found the people who robbed them, sometimes we don't. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> Does that mean that your cards are bullshit? Of course they're bullshit. They're fucking cards. No, they're not. They're I'm super, super, Molly Mock. super true. And you're asking if my cards are bullshit? I, of course I am asking you. My cards are not bullshit. Caleb. I want to say inside check so bad, I but I won't it. say it. You won't say it. No. C- Caleb, you have a photographic memory, as you remind us every session. <laughs> <laughs> how long do we have <laughs> until? How long do we have until our, our time is up with the gentleman? Um, DM will fill that information in. Uh, let's see. We had about three days traveling. Three, Partridge. Uh, you have, si- since you left, you have about two and a half weeks, I'll say, estimated at the moment. And how long would it take, do we think, to get up north there Shady, if we went Shady straight? Um, a week from, from Hubbard Duke? Knowing it was partially how long it took to get where we are on the map. I'd say off the top of my head, uh, a little under a week to. Oh, under a week? So we, we got a couple weeks. Well, we got a day or two to do, to spend on some prison. We got a day or two to spend on something like this, but not a week. Hang on, hang on. This thing has been a problem for years. The 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 clockwork warden. Why don't we just go finish our stuff? We have to cross back through here anyway. And come back. And come back and finish the job. Yeah. Yeah, we already have a job. Beauregard, don't you think they should be reunited with their father, who loves them very, very much and wants to be with them? Of course I do. They've been scrappy for long enough. They can be scrappy for another week or two. They, they don't even t- have to be that scrappy now. But they said the tithe man could return any day. Take them to an orphanage. What if we come back and they're gone? It would be horrible if they were taken away from their home and given to some people who would do horrible things to them or tr- mistreat them for their whole childhoods, leaving them as cold, heartless, resting bitches. <laughs> <laughs> you almost opened fire on these children like not more than 30 that seconds ago. That was an intimidation tactic. I would never hurt a child. Of course you would. No, I wouldn't. You I love children. That was, a, yeah. that, was <laughs> that was an accident. <laughs> I know I saw you this is why I don't miss the circus. <laughs> okay, so what are we doing? <laughs> it depends on how, how altruistic this group is. Oh my God. We already have a job. I mean, I will defer to the group, but we have a job and we are on a time table. I would really like the opportunity to leave this place better than we found it, especially for these kids. I'm not saying no. I'm just saying, remember that we are hired hands. I understand. If it goes sideways, it goes sideways, and we run. But if we can keep them out of an orphanage, I would be most grateful to all of you. I've done dumber shit. All right. I mean, Nod's over here trying to pull my heartstrings, but it seems like you should be the target. You have a thing with kids in orphanages? Were you an orphan? Mm -hmm. Separated from dad. Have you ever eaten an orphan? Yeah, so much for sticking to the plan. Were you an orphan? Inside check. <laughs> yes. <gasps> I was. They're terrible fucking places. 
Sorry. I'll say no more. I'm in. You know, I'm kind of interested if there's like a master lever to this prison. Just like prison break, see what happens. That sounds like a terrible idea. Maybe <laughs> we can um, um, negotiate our way into the prison and say we'll take care of the automaton, and while we're in there, we can sneak around and set the parents free. All right, if we do this, I think we need to give ourselves a hard time limit that we all stick to. Because the last thing that I want is for the fucking gentleman with his vials of our DNA mm. coming after our asses. Agreed. As long as we give him some notice, I think it will be okay. I have a feeling the gentleman isn't a guy that negotiates on time periods. The effort is all I ask for. We're a clever group. Surely we can survey, come up with a plan, try something. If we fail, we fail, and we'll move on with our objective. I, I can't leave here without trying. I would like right. it to be predicated on us coming up with at least a, a respectable plan, not willy-nilly flying with our balls out. I'm also in for, for a crossbow. And I guess it doesn't hurt to ask the gentleman if worse comes to worse. Just yeah. remember, you either get a nickname, the gentleman, either because you are one or because you're really not. not really. Yeah. Ooh, good point. How about we bring the kids back in, we give them a little coin so they stay out of trouble mm-hmm. for the next they, they have 30 gold so. on them. Yeah, mm-hmm. they got a lot they're of gold on them. That's a lot of money. And we tell them to stay put unless they're getting food. I'm gonna give them, um, nope, never mind, I'm not gonna give them that because that would be a terrible idea. Caleb, how long does your string theory work? String theory? <laughs> uh, eight eight hours, eight right? hours, yeah. What time is it? At this point, it's probably pushing one or two in the afternoon. Yeah, do we have any food we can leave for them so they don't have to? I have some oh. human jerky left over. <laughs> I did pocket some of the um, breakfast from this morning. You did? Yeah. Do you give that to them? I have one of the, I have one the of kids the rings hungrily accept and just devour, like evenly dividing amongst them. Sweeties. They feed the younger kids first, and then whatever's left over, the older ones take. And they just say, like, thank you. I really appreciate that. I've got a good idea. Hmm. Mm. Gonna give the older one one of the one of my rings. I've got I've got these strange little rings that I left over. Keep that on you. Sell it if you have to, but see if you can hold off for a while. If things go wrong, get within a thousand feet of the blushing of the uh, uh, blushing tavern. Of the blushing Tankered. tavern. Tankered. And hide and wait to find him. We'll find you. All right. Hide. Keep that in mind. Thank you. Thank you kindly. He puts it. Is it a ring finger or a, 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 a finger ring? Or it's a finger ring. It's, yeah. It came from. It came from a. a it's a finger ring. <laughs> it was one of the rings. It was one of the rings we found in the cave. Oh right. So he puts it over his thumb. It would be. It would be for his, you know, body and the size. It goes over his thumb. It's still a little loose, but it'll stay. That's terrible. Thank, well, uh, thank you. Uh, I don't know how I'll repay you, but. Question. <laughs> what are we going to do with Kiri right now if we're going down into the jail? She, she has a kids. sleepover. With the girl you found, right? And or with these Yasha? fabulous kids right now. No, Yasha needs to come with Yasha's us. We need her help. In this. Oh, that's yeah, true. Yasha, I know, it's like, no, I want, if we're going into a prison to kill something, I that's want to true. be there. Sorry. Well, what are you do? Forgot what time it was. Um, well, we, we know how leave. much, you know, the prostitutes cost to, oh. to watch Kiri. Just have it. Or we could drop Kiri off with the little girl that you. Or Kiri can stay here. With or she can stay here. She children. is. She does have a dagger. They are Kiri very capable here. children. Yeah, Kiri goes. That sounds adorable. <laughs> do you want to stay with them? <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. The children do owe us a little bit. Children, oh Schusters. <laughs> <laughs> oh Schusters. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys? Want to watch our little friend here as well? They go like, the little girl kind of walks up and kind of like touches the feathers, and you see the feathers on the back of Kiri's head kind of <laughs> close a little bit, and the eyes kind of close for a second, starts so scratching the side of her head. She's kind of like you, though, so she's not like a pet or anything. She's a real little girl, okay? Hey, Kiri. Don't let her stab anything. Show me your music box. So I was playing, and like the little girl kind of leans in, and they all kind of close in quickly. And and for a moment, you can kind of see this little 
you know, unit of, of kids meeting a new friend and a friend meeting new kids, and you're like, okay, Look, you it might be okay for a little bit. Yeah. You take care of each other. You're a little temporary family for now. He's going to make yeah. some protection. Kinda, uh, this uh, thread I am going to put around uh, the chamber that you are living in, and I will know if a little feather friend or you all leave. You're perfectly welcome to. I'm just letting you know that I will know. Yeah? Okay. Y'all can nod to you. Kiri looks to Ford and can. Stay quiet. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so weird. <laughs> so in leaving the kids there, you all quietly exit the building, kind of reaffirming the doors that you had kicked in. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, lean, lean those up again. <laughs> and, oh, and Mike has mending on the doors. There you go. Ah, all right, and you managed to get the doors back into a, a sizable place <laughs> and begin to discuss how you're going to tackle this next endeavor. And that's where we'll go ahead and finish the, this week's episode. We'll pick up next week. What a good night. Well done, guys. That was fun, Z's. We'll see if. Uh, hey, we got your money back! We got our money back! See if you can earn your Tinker Top Bolt Master. Oh, oh my god. Sounds good. Could have just gone back and bought it, but no. Yeah. We want to go to the expert yeah, yeah. level. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, you can buy it, or you can collect all 48 pine cones, uh -huh. and then you just unlock it. <laughs> it's like that. Hey, man. Back Good game, up. guys. Awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, we should definitely so rest great. before the next part because I just used up all my second yeah. level. Well, we can do a recon. recon and we'll then do we'll we'll recon for yeah. the afternoon, and then we'll okay. attack tomorrow morning. Okay. Okay. And, yeah. Plan. Okay. Big time plan. Unless this guy comes in the next week. <laughs> 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 yeah. If that, if that happens. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> and on that note, uh, have a wonderful week, guys. We'll see you next Thursday for the next uh, stage of this crazy adventure. Uh, remember, we love you, and is it Thursday yet? Good night.